One night in a big metropolis, a boy was seen who at that time was crying. However, what appeared in the child's eyes were three people who looked like bad people, laughing happily amidst the boy's cries. Then after that, it was discovered that the child was lying limp on the road while bleeding from his mouth, and at the same time three men just left him. But it turns out it was a memory where he hated this world. He was just abandoned, and when he was born he was treated like an animal. Memories of fights and beatings appeared before his eyes, and therefore there he has no reason for him to love this world. That's why the man never trusted anyone, and he never cared about anyone, because he realized that he was always alone. Then, after that, exactly on January 1st, 2020, at that time, the world turned into a game. At the same time, dungeons suddenly started to appear in the city, and monsters came out from the place where the dungeon appeared. And because of that, there was destruction in the city which resulted in many people dying. However, at the same time as the monster appeared, a sacred creature called a Nimbus also appeared from the city. And it is known that its appearance gives a special power to some people which is called authority. And everyone who receives authority is called a player who can complete the dungeon. But after that, people believed that players with special powers could be used to save the world. The players who take advantage of this chaos are busy only fulfilling their selfish goals. And it is known that the current situation which many people think is the end of everything can also be called the end of time. But for that man, this world was still a place where he trusted no one, at least until he met him, namely Lee Sejun, a handsome blonde man in luxurious armor. He was one of the first seven inheritors of the Holy Light and the strongest player in the world. It is known that he selflessly helps the weak and protects them from the evil monsters that attack humanity. And to save the world like the hero from the legend of King Arthur. He pulled the sword from the stone. Then after that, Lee Se-jun stood up with a sword in his hand and said that he would destroy the final boss in this game. And end all this. That's how he saved the world. From a guild called Messiah, brave people who want to save the world gather around Lee Se-jun. This was the first time there was a big fight between a troll monster and a player for the first time in its life. He met people he could trust. Along with everyone else, this guy thinks he can change this world. He turns to the chief and says that the final battle remains, and the blonde replies that yes, perhaps this will be the final battle. However, suddenly the blonde man took out his sword and stabbed Kim Woo-jin right in the stomach. With that, he said that he was a good person. If it weren't for him, they wouldn't have been able to achieve all this. The man was sitting on his knees and holding the hilt of the sword to his stomach. The curse has been placed on Kim Woo Jin. The resistance force had been reduced by 90%. His defense was reduced by 90%. He could barely pronounce words. Then, after that, Kim Woo Jin asked Lee Se Jung, Did he plan all this from the start? But why did Lee Se Jung mock him? He didn't understand yet. But suddenly a beautiful girl appeared and said that when the game was over, everything would be lost. Their powers, objects, monsters, dungeons, and reasons for reading them will be lost. They wouldn't even be able to take over this world. Then after that, the girl whispered it in the guy's ear when he was sick. From the wound, he loudly shouted the blonde's name and found himself poisoned by a poisonous snake. An incomprehensible black substance came out of him. As he lay at Lisa Young's feet inside the girl, he said, that the curse only causes poisoning, but after that the guy was cool. Other people only have enough poison to die. The person didn't understand who it was at first. Kim Woo Jin believes in them and wants to save this world and his so-called colleagues with whom they risked their lives together. However, it turns out that now he is blocking it. So they decided to take it off the road. The man turned out to be very smart. The girl spread her hands and said that the thunderstorm dragon warrior and even the god king John George got rid of them all. And now don't they have the right to rule this world as they like? The man sitting on his knees shouted at Lisa June to find an excuse for his actions with his dirty mouth. But instead, he went with the girl and left her alone. The man cursed while blood gushed from his mouth. He fell forward and couldn't hold on any longer. He realized that no one in this world could be trusted. That's how he died. Then, after that, 
a conversation was heard, and at the same time, Kim Woo Jin was seen in a truck, where at that time there were many people in the car. At that time, the men were talking about something that would happen today. It seems like monsters have started to appear too frequently, but others told him to stop complaining. Because thanks to this, there will be money today. In response to this, the man received only swearing. There are many lives at stake. He hopes they pay more. Then the truck drove along the road at high speed. Kim Woo Jin sits in the back in a bulletproof vest and doesn't understand how he got there, because he had just been stabbed by Lee Se Jung and ended up dying. However, Kim Woo Jin felt that the place where his injury should have become a reality. But he didn't find anything. Is this some kind of dream? Several men in the same uniform were riding with him. They all talked to each other. What kind of place is this? However, suddenly the truck stopped. Because there was something on the road that was confusing. There was no way to get past the big green monster that was walking there. And there is a damaged police car and the dead officer. The driver shouts back that there is a crowd of orcs in front of them. And everyone should immediately grab their weapons and get out. Then after that, the soldiers grabbed their rifles and started jumping out of the trucks where the monster beasts turned around and rushed towards them. The driver shouted for the men to hurry, and the commander shouted to his soldiers that there weren't enough bullets for everyone, so they should shoot only when they are sure. Suddenly, they were interrupted by loud gunshots. It turned out that Kim Woo Jin had killed an orc by shooting him right in the head. One by one, he started killing the green monsters and even kicking them. Troops stood on the sidelines and didn't do it. Understand who this person is, what he is doing, and how it is possible to overcome a crowd of orcs alone. The man stood up and looked at his hands in confusion, because he thought everything around him was too real to be the chairman's dream. The man with the thick mustache came up to him and called him a crazy idiot. Could he really kill them all? The man realized, sadly, that it wasn't a dream. After all, he had just returned to the past. Ujin walked past the man until he could not reach him. He had to answer when he was addressed by this bastard. The people on the sidelines didn't understand what was wrong with this guy. He sat on a box and rested his head on his hands. He remembered Lee C. Jun and Park Shin Hai. It must have been their doing. The man suddenly heard that he had become a player. The halo that could help him be highlighted on that front is the day he became a player. But compared to the past, he now had three choices. Suddenly, he stopped at representation. From the Dark World role allows one to control various types of curses or use them as materials. You can create a Dark Soldier unlike other roles this one is endowed with cheating abilities. Therefore, one player can have all the skills. John George, who was called the King of the Immortals, was the most powerful player who received help from the representatives of the Dark World. And all his abilities, if Lee S.I. Jung is a hero, then he is a monster. And to find this monster, he analyzes and examines it. Hello, Naya. So now he will do it, become a monster, and let the hunt begin. Then after that, it was discovered that the guild was a commercial organization to unite players from all of them. And it was possible to gain money and power by any means in the Phoenix Guild. So he became the second guild in Korea. Against the background of corruption in this guild, the other messiah looks more perfect. But after that, the Phoenix Guild headquarters, a man in a business suit, handed Gaia a contract paper to join the guild. Each sweep requires additional costs. Looking at the docks, I realized that this was not enough to purchase the item. But there was nothing that could be done, he asked the man. How could he prove his qualifications as a player after all the status window could only be seen by the player himself and there was no way for others to see it? The man handed over something in his hand and said that this was the unique skill page of the Dark World representative. The man has to choose one of them and take apart the paper. If he is a player, then the man can check everything with his own eyes. There were some cards on the table in front of Wu Jin. He saw the hematoxin among them and was shocked because he didn't think he could get it here. This skill turns blood into a powerful poison that is very difficult to fight. The skill itself is very simple. But with Blood Golem, the effect increases, so this is a very useful ability. The man took the page in his hand and tore it with the words that he was taking this skill now. He had acquired the hematoxin skill. 
The girl with short blonde hair asked the people nearby why the jinn couple were chosen as bloodhounds, and the bald man answered her. That it was because his character was the most dog-like in the entire guild. The girl gasped at this statement. If she stayed with him any longer, she would understand how bad he was. The characters are someone shouting about the arrival of strangers, a team of tall blonde men in hoods preparing for battle. While Kim Woo Jin sat with his phone in his hand and tried to find out what happened to him. During this strange day, he died once and was reborn, but he still dreams about his past life. If he goes back to the past, then they might still be alive. How soon he can meet them. The action takes place at Guangman Sports Park. A bearded man waves to someone and asks if everyone has come. The long-haired girl says that today is their first hunt, and they should just trust Big Brother Juice Soup, right? The brutal man replies that this is his fourth campaign, and they all have to believe and follow him through the path where it is located. Then after that, the last participant everyone turned to see an old car driving into the parking lot that was snorting and emitting a lot of smoke. A blonde man looked at him with a stain and said that this man was here for the first time. But he was already so slow, this newbie had to become more disciplined. A hooded man got out of the car. While the girl nodded at the blonde, it was true, she should be thankful in general that they let her join the team, and it was awful. He had another guy, a brown-haired guy, judging by his appearance. This guy hadn't even received any guild equipment yet, but it seemed like in his first operation, he decided to focus on survival. The young kid turned around and walked away, forgetting about the most important freak telling the others that they would only pretend to lose one participant. He just got a new gun. However, after that, Kim Woo Jin stood behind everyone as they stood and discussed in their close circle. The brief about the dungeon was over, and the things the man mentioned were not important. The main thing is to remember your goals and the conditions under which it is difficult to fulfill them. A man in a business suit and glasses who was wiping the sweat from his face was talking to the team who was sitting at the big table. The man said that he needed to check everything again. If they suddenly have questions or someone suddenly wants to object, then let them talk now. If there isn't, then you need to check your inventory again. The team started looking at each other and laughing in their palms, looking at the strange man who was sitting alone hiding his head in his hood. He didn't know anyone present so it wouldn't be boring to worry about them. Well, the man announced that they were all welcome to enter the dungeon. The team came to a large, bright portal. The girl enthusiastically said that this was the first time she had seen him so close. The bald man replied that they would be more surprised when they went inside. Everyone, one by one, started to go through the portal. Looking at the large, beautiful forest in front of him, the girl covered her mouth with her palm, and it felt as if they had entered a completely different world or game. The bald man said that this was the true reality of the way they were all wearing different costumes. However, the bald man threw his sword behind his back, ordering everyone to stay where they were and be alert. Because everyone only had one life left. Kim Woo Jin thought that judging from the footprints, there were a lot of goblins in this place. The chairman approached the person and asked, Is his name Kim Woo Jin? While they were setting up camp, could he explore the surroundings with some reluctance? Kim Woo Jin responded by saying, of course, take care of the person leaving. One of the team said that he thought the person would be annoying. But it turns out he was so easily fooled by the trick. He didn't know how dangerous it was to be left alone. It was stupid of the commander to offer to talk about hunting because now all the goods would be his. At this time, thought the man, they will use it as bait. He smiled silently because this was what he had expected. Then, in the middle of the night, a city. The large building was illuminated by a large moon whose light was very bright. It was known that in the tall building of the guild, the girl was standing behind the people who were gathered at that time and a large table where everyone finally gathers. He wanted to introduce a new member to the mission. The people sitting at the table were very surprised, and a young man entered the door of the hall, young Jihu of the Messiah Guild, looked at the newcomer, and realized that he was just an arrogant bastard. The newcomer remains in the shadows and introduces himself as Suzuki Aikai. He saw so many familiar faces, so he thought he didn't need to introduce himself. Lee Se-jun answered Suzuki that he had high ambitions, 
but he gave his name. Suzuki asked what he should do. When a fist slammed sharply onto the table, the large man shouted at the man for how dare he speak to the chief in such a tone. Another guild member asked the master, why did he call this bastard Suzuki? Doesn't understand why everyone is so angry with him. Are they all going crazy? Whether they are annoyed by his intonation, or because last time they still had some left, this bastard is definitely over today. Youngji continued to curse. While the other guys were thinking he was being a jerk at the round table in this curse mess, someone shouted to stop this farce immediately. If not for the last time, Suzuki will beat this one. The girl decided to take matters into her own hands and try to calm him down. The prize was because his name was Park Shin Hai. The work shown earlier is how much longer can I wait if we are just talking about finding material locations, then three days is pretty good. Meanwhile, in the forest, Kim Woo Jin was checking a large scratch on a tree the rumors about this dungeon weren't lying. Now it's even funny what kind of intelligence and fighting style he taught her all this. Every trace carries information and it will help her survive in the dungeon. Words from memory information are important, but to survive, it's not enough to just be stronger. Suzuki, from Jin's memory, answered that no matter how strong he was, he always had weaknesses. The person thought that Suzuki's words would be a lesson for him. But it turns out that for that reason, the male messiah jumped from a tree branch, thinking that Suzuki didn't just kill for the sake of the messiah, but also be a loyal dog for them. But now this knowledge was about to turn into a knife in his back suddenly. Something flew with the man and hit the tree of the green-eared goblins. It's not friendly. It's even funny that the guy took his sharp dagger until he recently hid from the goblins in the basement. Seven floors, but now they were only targeted by his hematoxin. The goblins charged towards the man brandishing various weapons. But Kim Woo Jin was able to overcome the attack and cut the first of the goblins prone to blood poisoning. But the goblin continued to fight. He was still poisoned. But he was able to move. The poison wasn't that effective. The fight was quite serious and bloody. The person realized that the goblin's strategy was easy to predict. So it will be easy to handle this rubbish. If he delayed, these goblins would only continue to pile up. That person took out a huge whip and waved it with such force. So all the goblins were surprised at how good it was. He had prepared it in advance, after all. It was the Goblin King's whip. Then after that, the remaining team members in the forest were seen turning around because they heard a strange sound. But after that, at the same time, a group of fierce and armed green goblins flew towards them. One goblin swung his bat at the girl, and then the bloody massacre began. The bald man suddenly said that there was no need to be so afraid of ordinary goblins. The girl stood up and looked at Yusup Young with all her eyes. While big tears flowed from his eyes, the other two men laughed and told their Hyung to concentrate, because he didn't need to be afraid of this blackout how nice it was that Jusup Hyung had his long sword with him. But after that, the goblin was just a bag of meat, yet he could never take out his sword which he didn't expect. And the packaging. The goblins came closer and closer and finally attacked the man knocking him to the ground. He lay on the ground and screamed for help while these idiots stood by and watched the goblins attack rapidly. Gathering their strength, the team rushed to attack to help the man, and the goblins' strength slowly diminished. At this time, the last goblin escaped Kim Woo Jin's whip, but a strong blow on the back reached him. After that, he fell to the ground with this attack. It had leveled up higher, and now a representative of World Darkness was interested in it. A new achievement had been gained, attracting attention. The man grinned evilly and realized that these green goblins were much weaker than he thought passing by a group of exposed monsters. He realized that he was attracting attention, even with so much just fools brandishing his heavy sword, Goblin King's whip was enough, and now that the battle was over. There's no point in wasting your time here while the others sit in the field and away from the recent battle, they all sit hurt and tired and suddenly remember it. New guy, what happened to him? Ju Soup replied that the person most likely died because there was no news from him, but a terrible scandal happened. He would have been much better off if someone else had gone with them. We did it all. As Jusup was annoyed, what happened were the two men angry at his house and swearing dirty. Hyung told me to believe it. 
Suddenly they were disturbed by the noise and couldn't believe that a crowd of goblins were running towards them. While Kim Woo Jin acquires new and new skills, there are many reference books in front of him, and there is a new skill framework warrior. That person couldn't believe that he now had this skill John George the Immortal King could control the army of the dead with his own hands with one of his strongest skills. However, on the other hand, this skill is not perfect. The flaws are fatal, which means that only monsters killed directly by the caster's hands can be sacrificed. There are also very large limitations. Well, at least it would save time, it would be easier to distract the enemy and hunt him down. The man put his hand on the dead goblin and his body immediately turned into a skeleton. The glint in his eyes was the little skeleton standing with a sword near his dead kin. Then after that, Kim Woo Jin leaned against a tree and watched a moving skeleton with a sword in his hand. However, this wasn't as strong as he expected the magic power indicator on that person was too low. If is there nothing you can do, it will be difficult to use it as a main weapon. Suddenly he raised his head and saw a pile of other players' remains near the tree, their rotting bodies hanging like dolls. There was one thing in common between all the monsters from the weakest goblin to the strongest dragon. The desire to hurt people, unfortunately, most newcomers don't take this into account, so he has no reason to be merciful. These monster beasts, Ju Soup and his team, were sitting around the campfire and still wailing. That they were just defeated by some ugly goblins. What should they do now? The blonde man in the hood says that he must be tired of this dungeon. Ju Soup can't die like this. He wouldn't lose to those damn goblins after all, none of them could die here. The people looked at Hyun in shock while shouting, asking what was wrong with them. However, it is difficult. But they can still handle it if they try hard. The man in the hood suddenly bleeds that he didn't talk about it at all. He points his finger at Ju Soup's back and says that he has something on his head. At first, he didn't understand what he was talking about. Then I saw bright blue writing above my head level up what happened because Ju Soup wasn't even in the fight. Nowadays, anyway, the level goes up only when someone from that team fights. So the newcomer is still alive. A burning torch rises into the air. Kim Woo Jin stands in a cave among the corpses of goblins and lights his way with a torch. Based on his experience, the most effective way to kill a crowd of goblins was to do this, and he threw the burning torch to the ground. So that the burnt wooden plank of a small skeleton stood next to the man, while they both looked at the burning building. The goblin inside the cave started coughing and choking. They fell to the ground holding their throats and trying to get air, but there were the most persistent ones who started to walk through the boards blocking the cave entrance. They started coming out from all the gaps, reaching out their hands to seduce Jin. The man stood there and said with a smile that he wanted to bury at least the dead. Players along with the fire goblins continued to grow. Rising higher and higher, the representatives of the cruel world delight in the cruelty of the man. After a while, the board caught fire and the fire went out very strangely. So the man hoped he could see at least her face was a little unpleasant. Maybe she was hiding somewhere came a sound behind him and a large green troll jumped out of the ground, scattering bits of dirt and grass around him. The little sky skeleton himself was afraid of the big teeth of this monster, and the man replied that this monster finally come out, otherwise he was already bored with this place. Thanks to him for showing himself a huge goblin with burning eyes was looking at the man. It was the goblin boss, while the monster was bearing its huge fang teeth, the man thought that until the Messiah Guild intervened in this matter. Then after that, Kim Woo Jin was seen facing a large goblin king. And it is known that millions of newcomers died in this dungeon, and it was all because of the monsters in this goblin dungeon. The first level encounter with the hidden goblin king is the same as an encounter with death. But he won't do it. Let this monster continue taking lives. The skeleton was making noise somewhere below and he asked her if she was that eager to fight. It seemed like he had tamed this little brute. The skeleton turned around and looked at the man with such a gaze, so that the man immediately noticed a change in himself. As a result, Kim Woo Jin stood on the sidelines while the skeleton carrying the sword went to fight the Goblin King. He was as fast as lightning and swung his weapon back and forth. However, 
Kim Woo Jin suddenly had a flashback from the past where he stood with a sword among people who were ready to fight a big monster. A man one of the team members asked how they should kill this huge monster. Kim Woo Jin shouted that it was urgent to attack its feet. If they could take it down, there would be a much greater chance of winning. He ran toward the monster, swinging his sword back and forth. And it was this movement that made the man think deeply. Now this skeleton reminded the man of himself. This fighting style he recognized from a hundred fighting powers that were the same as his own. Acolyte skeleton, he knew that his power would affect the skeleton. But he would never have thought that he would copy her style. Before Kim Woo Jin returned to the past, he could handle almost any weapon in existence, even in the guild there were only a few people who could fight him on one. At this rate, Woo Jin needed to rethink his plans. A bright sign appeared in front of the man again, on which it was written that the Dark World representative appreciated his achievements and sent him a legendary skill page as a reward for his efforts. But after that, he shot the legendary Kim Woo Jin and didn't expect to get it here at all. In the security tower, someone shouted that the dungeon had been cleared. The bespectacled man was very surprised to run out of the small container-like room and stared at the portal from which the team he sent there came out. This meant the players were back. Had the dungeon been cleared, it had only been one day, how could the man be so shocked and confused? Later, when the ambulance was around and the players were being treated, the man said he was very happy they were all back alive. But then he asked why there were only four of them, while Mr. Kim Woo Jin's cast looked down at the ground and didn't dare answer this question. Because they don't know anything about the man. The man adjusts his glasses on his face and says that it must be Mr. Kim Woo Jin. It must be the guard shouting that someone else has come out of the portal. Everyone turned towards the portal, of course. It was Jeans. He stepped out as if nothing had happened, put his hands in the pockets of his hoodie and just left without saying a word to the other players. Ju Soup Hyung thought that this guy was still alive, this brute. What tricks did he use to clean him up? Then after that, the newspapers had big headlines, while they continued to listen to player requests. And at that time, the news said that all over the world the greed of players was increasing every day. According to analysis, the dungeons could only be cleared by the players, so they tried to abuse their power. But even now the Korean Messiah Union cleared the five-story dungeon without any reservation mail correspondent said that Lee S.I. Jun saved the world again after successfully clearing a five-story dungeon. The union's sponsor, Han Sun Corporation, recorded a sharp rise in stock prices. Ju Soup cursed those damn bastards from Messiah. All the news was only about them. They made them look like bastards who do everything just for money. Then, a blonde guy in a suit sits next to Ju Soup, and he tells her to forget it, because this is not the first time. Besides, what happened in the dungeon after all that? Ju Soup sighed heavily and asked his friend not to talk about this. Kim Woo Jin almost died because he was the blonde guy. Ask the bald man what happened. He pointed his finger at the bandage on his head and said, that it was all because of the newcomers. It turned out the rumors were still not a lie as he pressed his palm to his face. Ju Soup Hyung answered in annoyance that this newbie had joined their team and he wanted new items. He even met a crowd of goblins and to save him, the man also chased him. Then this happened. The blonde was very shocked by what he heard and asked, shouldn't the guild punish that person? However, one could only dream of such a thing, and it also felt like he was being stepped on. It looks like Kim Woo Jin needs the money. But no matter how much money it takes, it's still wrong. The blonde will try to talk to her friends, so she can't I wouldn't do this anywhere else. At that time, Kim Woo Jin was standing near the wall with various clippings, and ATS he shouldn't have dated in June like before he had to become stronger so that Lee would be interested in him. The man moved a little away from the wall, which was all covered with paper and red thread. He tore a piece of paper and thought that he should start from the most forgotten corner of his life, and it turned out to be an Orkin dungeon located on a large conference table. Kim Woo Jin listened to what the man in the business suit was saying to him. He told the man that if he tried to dispel the rumors spreading through the guild and try to solve everything. Now the rumors, Kim Woo Jin didn't hear any rumors. He just needed some money, a man with glasses and a mustache, 
asked if it was all about the money. He told Kim Woo Jin that life is priceless. Of course, money is also important. However, wasn't he worried about his life? If the money is needed, then the guild can lend it. The man interrupted the man and replied that everything was fine. Let them set the date, and he will do the rest himself. These inappropriate and unpleasant rumors are now a welcome gift for him. A good argument to go alone later in the same office, the second person told the boss that most likely the rumors about Kim Woo Jin weren't lies. He replies that rumors are rumors, but this guy doesn't know his place at all. Moreover, what is the law of the dungeon he wants to go to? The assistant replies that recently a group of Yong Gu youths went there. Where he was murdered since then, no one has proposed for a whole month. Young Gu is the rising star of the gang park. Young Wan looks out the window. But after that, the men thought about what to do. He was trying to get into a dungeon that wasn't mastered by the specialist park Yong Wan. He wouldn't live long. But to some extent, they would have supported him well if the man had stood in the parking lot near his car and looked up at the tall building where he had just gone to kill the hero he needed to befriend the young villain Park Wen. Outside, it was late at night and Jean was still standing near the pale yellow car, a fat man wearing glasses ran towards him. Him and called him. He was very surprised that the man came and came alone. Most likely it was because he couldn't find a partner because of his greed for money. But he of course did not voice the thought. The man immediately offered to go to the dungeon and pointed the way with his hand. The man was truly crazy that he would go there alone. But why he cared was none of his business whether this man died or not. When Woo Jin found himself inside the dungeon already in uniform, a sign appeared in front of him. Clearing the dungeon was impossible. According to his level, if he goes alone, but if he can use orcs as skeleton soldiers, then everything will change. A huge green goblin appeared behind Jin and the guy slipped under him as he was faster and faster than the monster it turned out to be an ordinary orc. But his skin was denser. The attack only left a small scratch. And with that kind of strength, Kim Woo Jin would have died with just one blow. However, if only he could kill this monster and summon it as a skeleton soldier. Then he would have a chance to complete the dungeon alone. Kim Woo Jin started attacking the orc with slaps in the face. He ran around his huge feet back and forth, leaving scratches on his body from the blood of his sword that was gushing from him. The wound on the monster fell to the ground. The legless predator was no longer scary, the skeleton warrior was called no one. But after that, in an office he was seen sitting with his friend who promised to get information. He looked in the folder and found something interesting, but the blonde man asked his friend what he was looking at. However, don't let him say that he is trying to choose a strange subject for his business again. He threw the folder at the blonde and asked to look at it. Because he was very curious that there were documents about Kim Woo Jin a beginner who had just woken up and cleared the dungeon by himself. They said that he had now entered the second cave. And this time, he was alone from the start. He's arrogant for a guy who just gained his abilities. Isn't he the blonde guy saying that this is impossible? This is complete nonsense nonsense. Even he had difficulty at first. Ju Soup Hyung didn't want to say that he believed in a paper with an unknown source, right? I don't think a man is so naive. And then a girl in high heels in a business suit and with a tray in her hand came up to them. He asks if everything is fine with her. Report the blonde immediately seeing the light as she was provided by Lee's secretary. Then it was no wonder the man thought he was perfect and how he could find such accurate information. Then he laughed nervously the girl who put the coffee tray on the table answered that it was her job. He said that this information was 100% reliable because it was collected by Lee's secretary. And if they can't trust Secretary Lee, then who can they trust when Ju Soup sips coffee? He suddenly stood up and shouted at the girl because she asked him not to buy instant coffee quickly because he hates it. So why did he buy it? The girl didn't notice the boss calmly drinking from his glass. And then he answered that this coffee was left over from the meeting with the Phoenix Guild earlier. Last week and this report was prepared on the back of the man's scrap paper, suddenly changed his face and bled at how delicious the coffee was. But it turns out the best thing is the instant one. Of course, if they can't trust Secretary Lee, then who else in the world can they trust?
The blonde man gritted his teeth while saying, Ugh, what a stingy. That's why at this age, Ju Soup asked Secretary Lee. How things are with the purchase of the seller, the girl replied that there are several good sellers. But the price was too high, so he kept seeing the blonde man turning to his henim. Is there no basement left? From the dungeon he had just obtained, the man had stars before his eyes. From this idea, what does his friend mean? If he started entering the dungeon, then they won't have enough of them. The blonde all woke up and asked what he was, the guy who just came back from the dungeon yesterday. Doesn't he deserve a break? The man waved his hand and answered, that if a person rests frequently, he will soon become a truly lazy workaholic like Blondin prone to disease. And therefore, Ju Soup did it only for his good. It was the old man currently in the skeleton warrior dungeon fighting with a group of orcs, but couldn't defeat them and scattered the person who was watching this from the rock, noted in annoyance. That due to the low skill level, the resistance was quite weak. However, John George, the king of the gods whom he fought in his previous life, told him. One thing Kim Woo Jin walked over to the body of one of the orcs and lay down. His hands forward summoning new skeleton soldiers, a huge skeleton towering over him as long as his magic power allows, Kim Woo Jin will have as many skeleton soldiers as there are victims who have fallen on this battlefield. Later, the person's level increases, all the skill points will increase, and the blood poisoning skill has reached the second level. The man looked at the results table and thought that all the effort to level up in this dungeon would be difficult. We should stop fighting ordinary orcs and look for orc hunters as creatures that hunt alone. Then after that, the guy I thought was going to run the group, but it didn't seem like he was hanging out with the group. However, there was only one place left. The skeleton sat on the ground like the man himself, and he didn't understand what was wrong with him. Does he know something that's why he looks like that? It was impossible, no matter where an orc hunter was. If he was in this place, then there would be no useful monsters he could use as sacrifices. However, the only useful skeleton soldier would be this friend he walked towards the skeleton and tapped its skull with a tree branch with which he drew a picture on the ground. We need to make something better. They got up from the ground and went pro, sitting on the bones of the dead orc. One got up from the ground and growled loudly, so the birds flew into the sky and flew away. He placed his huge paw on his companion's head and seemed to promise to avenge him. But after that, the big orc was seen sitting on top of his kin and looked like he was crushing him, while Kim Woo Jin stood up and hid behind a rock while he held a bow in his hand. He realized that the dungeon boss was stronger than the other orcs. However, it would be foolish to fight him without much preparation. But if he could only pierce his body with poison arrows, blood on the edge while Kim Woo Jin stood up and hid the skeleton with a sword out towards the monster, he turned towards him and growled loudly, splashing his saliva in different directions. The skeleton and the monster rushed towards each other to attack in a difficult battle. Of the two thugs, started the boss biting one of the bones of the skeleton while Kim Wu Jin came out of hiding and aimed his bow arrow at the green with glowing red eyes of the orc boss. You can understand that he is the same orc hunter and that it is also necessary to avoid his thick skin and get into the only weak point. Wu Jin shot an arrow and it flew through the skeleton and hit the monster right in its red eyes, contrary to all expectations. Then after that, the orc easily pulled the arrow from the injured eye and threw it. It fell to the ground, but there was poison there, so the poisoned blood still affected it. The weaker the attack point, the faster the poison spreads. Kim Woo Jin grinned evilly, looking straight into the orc's eyes. Thanks to the poison blood skill, the orc's health will gradually decrease within seconds. This level of skill will not increase the chance of a fatal outcome, but this effect is sufficient. The skeleton raised his sword high above the orc, and the man said that the orc had been killed, and after that. The notification again talked about the achievement while the person was standing near a group of skeletons. It seemed like this boss managed to eat everything that got in its way. I wondered if he had this person among the Park Yong Wan group members after taking a closer look, the man asked himself. Was this him looking at the broken ribs? The man realized that such an injury was not caused by an orc. By appearance, it had become fashionable to say that he was attacked from behind someone who was used to killing in dungeons.
It was not immediately clear whether this was an attack, intentional killing or not. But if they were members of Park Yong Wan's group in the Phoenix Guild, then in principle one could even commit suicide because of money and goods. There was only a little time left in this dungeon. How could he find the trace? This person has a bright moon shining in the sky that periodically hides behind flying clouds. Kim Woo Jin stands near a rock resembling a cave entrance. It would be nice if it brought him closer to Yong Wan Park. He moved to the entrance to the cave. And when he started to go in there, he realized that only one person could pass here. Inside, he saw the skeleton of a dead man, as if in this position. He was hugging his sword and sitting on his armor. The man was assessing the situation of his weapon. It turned out to be very clean, and the frame wasn't damaged like the others. This means that when his comrades are dying, then after that, he escaped into this small cave and counted the days until he died. An act that Phoenix would be guilty of, especially if it was a resurrection. Ban Star Park Young Wan. There is no more suitable place in the world for the grave of such a person. Besides the skeleton, Kim Woo Jin saw a small book and picked it up. But it turned out to be a diary after tracing the pages, the person realized that there didn't seem to be anything important in it. But then he found Park Yong Wan's group blacklist. There was a photo of the band members crossed out. Yeah, that guy must be lucky today. There is an amazing app for this diary. Then after that, the Dark World representative congratulates you on the dazzling achievement and sends you a legendary skill page. As a legendary rank reward, let's just say he got something like that here. His skill is the eye of Anubis to be able to see into the past of the dead. Whatever failures he experienced in his past life, everything has changed now. But after that, they say the dead don't know how to talk. But for Kim Woo Jin now, it doesn't matter at all. The man crawled closer to the skeleton and squirmed, reaching out to reach his head. Jin's eyes flashed blue, and he began to see the past of the man he used to be. Thus, activating the eye of Anubis upon making contact with the skeleton, everything around it lights up with a bright blue flash. The man began to see the past where a wounded man asked for help from Yong Jayu. Because those damn orcs, the man in the red raincoat who turned out to be Yang Jio, just turned around and ran. He ran into the cave and holding his head with both hands started muttering that he shouldn't die like this hunting people is a crime. It was fine as long as he stood behind it he was talking about someone who would one day become the owner of the Phoenix Guild. Then a man in a white coat was sitting in a chair that was Park Yong Wan's eyes. The fiery blue Kim Woo Jin. He came out of the memories of the skeleton removing his head from there and held his eyes because it was so cold. Is this the memory of a dead person who has a rather painful past that he passed through more magic power than he would like? Now his preparations were complete if he used this information in the list he found. He would be closer to Park Yong Wan, and no matter how careful he was in a house made in a modern style, something very strange was happening. The man beat the second one, because allowing another player to take over the dungeon overcomes the pain. And the man's blood asked for forgiveness for this. If that man would look after the man whose boss was sitting on the newspaper asked again and said that the dungeon he couldn't overcome had been cleared by a newcomer. And then how dare he talk about it now? The man called Secretary Kim, and he apologized, and said he would immediately start the man who was taken away from the office screaming at the top of his lungs. So they don't kill him and give him another chance. But the door slams shut. And his pleas were ignored. The man continued reading the newspaper of a newbie who took over the dungeon alone. Very interesting. Although it's nothing surprising whether this means he has a bad reputation in the guild. But after that, the girl answered positively. In the first dungeon, this guy abandoned all his teammates. There were also rumors that he kept the entire bounty for himself. Although this has not been confirmed to be true or not, the problem is that if his reputation in the guild is bad, it will be very difficult to move on. He couldn't always walk alone when suddenly there was a call on the office phone, and the man pressed the button asking to talk on the other end of the phone. He was told that a man named Kim Woo Jin had requested a meeting with Boss Park Young. Wen grinned here. He did you come to the lion's den yourself, and this man never ceases to amaze. 
Currently, the assistant reported that the application results for a one-story dungeon with rankings in 20 places were allocated to the Phoenix Guild. Even though the seats were distributed evenly this time, the three guilds included Park Young Wan's guild. Currently competing for the remaining 20 spots, the biggest problem is even if they divide each faction into six seats, there will still be two seats left. That person doesn't understand because there are three factions. But why there are still two places left is hard for the assistant to say that's why they still haven't found a compromise, because in the ranked dungeon the chances of rare items dropping are higher. Moreover, since it was a one-floor dungeon, the efficiency was also good. The man who folded his hands in lock replied that they most likely would not give up on each other. They were just filled with themselves, sure if they knew what could happen in the dungeon, they would all be troublesome if there was anyone who wasn't part of the faction, but had applied for the two remaining seats. The assistant answered, That they can't yet properly understand you never know what could happen. When you entered without a group, the phone rang, and the man was told that it was Mr. Yong Wan. Then after that, his assistant was shocked. Park Young Wen's situation is already quite complicated. Why did he call the man with the mustache? Picked up the phone and said he was listening. Then, hearing Kim Woo Jin's name on the phone, he jumped from his seat, not believing his ears. What this young garden Wen was talking about said that he would contact the package later. The man hung up on the assistant asking his boss what was going on and received the response that Kim Woo Jin wanted to take the two remaining seats without the other factions knowing. If it's Kim Woo Jin, then the rumors aren't lies because he always goes everywhere alone. Other groups won't lie. Too worried about whether the boss wanted to say that Kim Woo Jin had become part of Park Young Wan's faction. The man replies that he doesn't know yet, maybe they just use it for the dungeon, and then they'll get rid of it. Reaping the assistant asked what to do with the one remaining spot if another faction fought over this spot Park Young Wen said on the phone. That he would surrender to the other factions if they put Kim Woo Jin in place so they would only be intermediaries between the two remaining factions. He was an incredible strategist, only to think that he had an ace hidden under the name Kim Woo Jin. Sometimes it's better to step back to get the biggest benefits later. Besides, what's wrong with Kim Woo Jin? How did he meet Park Young Wen? At this time, Kim's secretary asked his boss why he accepted Kim's proposal from Jin. But Park Young Wen replied that it was fun to see him struggle and on the way here to take the phoenix badge from the skeleton to the dungeon. And it just so happens that there aren't many good people left. Besides, she will be able to manipulate the man and then get rid of it at any time. Wouldn't it be easier to get rid of it right away? After it was no longer useful, an hour later Park Yong Wan picked up the notebook and asked the man, Does he know what it is? U Jin answered yes. He knew because he saw everything in it. The man asked the young man why he came and then whether he wanted to blackmail and get a lot of money. The man started talking, but he was interrupted as to whether he thought his blackmail would work. Kim Woo Jin replies that he came to him with an offer, not the one-story ranked dungeon squeeze that everyone was talking about. He wanted to get it there. The guy was laughing at this shit. The guy was surprisingly funny, but did he understand what kind of dungeon it was to say such a thing to a man? Ujin answered that he knew this was a dungeon where the Phoenix and Messiah guilds were competing because the number of places inside was limited. The man furrowed his thick blonde eyebrows in question at the man. They said someone who knew about this wanted to go there. Then after that, at Gyeonbu University. Kim Woojin was among the many spectators. While the professors in the department were giving information and pointing at a projector, Surely they all knew the contents of the dungeon report. But there are at least more than a thousand orcs in this dungeon. Next, the diagram is presented. While the man was leaning against the wall in the previous attack, it seemed like around 70 people survived, and almost half of the participants died. Only the elite players from each guild were gathered here. Considering it's impossible to say that all these deaths were caused just by fighting monsters, the man was forced to go blind. Noticed this due to Doc's lack of results, the person thought that there was a high probability of murder taking place among the players. Because this will be a good opportunity to get rid of rivals and steal items.
and also in this dungeon. The reward for killing an orc warrior is a fang of the orc type. In the end, the prize was awarded to the Messiah Guild for their great contribution. He didn't know what it was, but now thinking about it, the man realized that it was all very strange. Maybe this man at that time, when he was already involved in corruption. Kim Woo Jin left the classroom and walked down the university corridor. Even if Lee Se Joon was behind this incident, there was a possibility that his guild had nothing to do with it, and instead, he was infiltrating spies into other misdeeds. If he needed to suggest their next move based solely on memory, then most likely on the street near the large portal to the dungeon, there was a crowd of people. It was the players who entered there one by one, the various guilds gathered there, including Messiah. Then the participants were all wearing white coats. Phoenix is all dressed in red and there is even a lion skull. Another guild member, Kim Woo Jin, stood as usual with his hood covering his head. Everyone saw it because he went to the portal first. He would rather tear the orc's trunk. Fang Khan from his hands, a man and a girl were standing in the crowd looking for their guild. Because all these people couldn't find them, the captain of the Messiah Guild shouted to everyone to form up. Everyone saw how their formation was. Go, what else can you expect from their guild? How quickly they formed, great. They were also praised. For some reason, the other man replied that the fact that they were the first to come out didn't mean anything. However, because there are thousands of orcs there, it is very large. Orcs come out to the people, and Messiah will deal with them. Let everyone watch with caution a man with a shield advances, and a tenacious warrior who is skilled at provocation successfully, the big fanged orcs and the members of the Messiah attack each other. The man started to provoke the monster Lee the 15th June stood aside and conjured something wisdom source master skill successfully. While the two were fighting, the others felt as if an earthquake had started. But that's not it at all. There must be something behind the forest. The man pointed his finger towards the forest. When everyone turned, they saw a crowd of orcs running. There are so many of them, and they are all just big guys with backgrounds where they look like small insects. But they still started fighting the monsters. There was blood everywhere, the sound of blows and dust as the magicians turned their hands towards the battle, sending their magic towards it. The time has come, and the night crowd moves towards the orcs. Currently. Kim Wu Jin is standing on a tree branch and watching everything from above, because he thought no one would notice his absence. It's time for his turn to stand on the tree. Kim Wu Jin thought that the enemy would not be able to push the player to such an extent, so he has to take advantage of the situation and determine the location of the orc warrior according to the task you need to get rid of the orc warrior and thousands of guilds. The other orcs will first try to reduce the number of orcs to minimize losses, and after destroying thousands of orcs, they will start looking for orc warriors until then, that person should have time to get the clack of the orcs. Soldier Kim Woo Jin jumped down from the tree like an arrow. Something is happening in the orc nest. At night the leader sits on the throne. While the others crowded around, the one orc shouted one of the orcs probably thought that they were preparing to attack when the leader rose from his seat and excitedly raised his weapon. A thousand orcs rushing into the forest to fight with the people while Kim Woo Jin was watching all this from a high rock. Tracking the orcs fleeing the battlefield was a good idea. He looked at the armed orc with large lower fangs. The person thought that most likely this was the champion orc. He looked much stronger than the person imagined. But he sent his minions to fight against luck on Kim Woo Jin's side. While the others were fighting on the front lines, he could get closer to the orc champion, who was left alone and hide him first. By standing on hundreds of orc corpses, the messiah commander said that orcs were not that difficult to fight, because it seemed there were fewer orcs here than he had expected. The main troops were most likely elsewhere. A warrior approached the man and told his master that many orcs were heading their way, about a thousand. This was their main force because one man thought while turning to his people, the master said that they would stop there, they would need more equipment to fight the main force of orcs. Then after that, army soldiers from other guilds shouted, they say who are they to order everyone around them, not the dog messiah. The lion guild will continue the attack.
the Lord answered that many orcs are moving towards them. Competition between guilds is important. But if they don't cooperate, then they will. They all just die in this dungeon, a man standing very close asked. Whether they are not confident in their abilities. If they were that afraid of the orcs, then in principle they shouldn't have entered the dungeon. And a group of people went deep into the forest to meet their death. The master stood up and looked at them. What a hedgehog they are, still crazy bastards. We need to find a safe place to rest and prepare for the next battle. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin had obtained two soldier skeletons and was heading to the stone soldiers. The monster rose from its throne and walked towards the man. Then the skeletons rushed towards him, and the orc warrior Fang became active with one blow. The orc defeated one of the skeletons. And the man couldn't believe it. Then Kim Woo Jin realized that the second skeleton soldier would not last long, there was only one chance. And it was a blood poison arrow attack just now, while the last remaining skeleton distracts him. The arrow flew with the monster, but it didn't hit, and how could he turn away from it? He was a bit stronger than thought. The skeleton continued to fight until its sword broke into two pieces. People who saw the ruins realized that it wouldn't be easy. Maybe Kim Woo Jin needed to change plans. Then, after that, a large fang of wars was seen hanging around the orc's neck like a necklace, and there was no point in fighting with him while this fang was in his hands. Kim Jin's magic power is also not enough, so it would be better to retreat. The person ran in the other direction of the monster, but when he saw the orc did not chase him. With him, he stopped and turned his head. Did not chase the retreating enemy too troublesome indeed. It was quite expected from a ranked dungeon boss. This is good because he will be able to escape freely, but when he returns, the orc will be so sorry that he let the person go. Kim Woo Jin was flying through the sky against the backdrop of a large bright moon. When he was noticed by the master of the Messiah Guild, he looked up at the sky and thought that someone had also escaped from the battlefield. His soldiers turned to him and said that perhaps he had found the orc soldiers faster than them. The master replies that it's very possible and maybe not. They don't know for sure, but he also came back because he found an orc warrior that they shouldn't have found. But he trusted anyone blindly until they saw it with their own eyes. The item dropped from an A-rank dungeon boss belonged to the Lion Guild no matter what. Suddenly all the soldiers who were nearby fell to the ground. The master didn't understand what was happening. He was doing. I've never heard of any other monster appearing in this place besides orcs. No, it can't be a monster at all. The man started swinging the ball from side to side, looking around from the depths of the forest. Many glowing red eyes appeared, and he shouted. Monsters would appear if he thought he would be safe. After what he did. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin came to the place where everyone was sitting around the campfire, sharing in groups how nice it was. So no one faction was interested in him, but what was the atmosphere around him? He looked like he was going to a funeral. However, there were graves around him who thought that a lot of people would die on the first day. There's something wrong, even though it's only soldiers gathered here and they're all fine. Get ready for the battle between guilds to begin. Because he assumes someone shouted at another guy that he looked terrible, are you exaggerating? Despite your abilities, he replied to the speaker that the same could be said about him. Why did he say that their Hichai guild was the liveliest of all the living? In any case, they had news of other misdeeds. The man started to tell the judge that based on what they said, the Lion Guild suffered the biggest loss one group went into the forest to get the goods. But disappeared on the other side, the man noted that there were not one or two missing. Is this possible? He was told that it might have happened because the corpse was mutilated in such a way, so it is no longer possible to recognize it. After all, orcs eat people. The man cringed and said it was terrible. Even if you eat and die, you don't want to become food for this green monster. The man said that you don't need to say that, otherwise everything will come true. Kim Woo Jin sat alone on the sidelines and watched the people sitting around the campfire and discuss all this. But things are getting weird and it's starting to bother me more and more. If this was a normal assignment, then of course there would at least be people killed and seriously injured. One person survived this mission, but human life should take precedence over objects and the like. 
Right, considering they were in a dungeon level, this might happen. But the possibility that so many groups will be destroyed someday is not so high. There must be something behind it all. Jin's plans may fail. If the soldiers became weaker from tomorrow, he would work harder. That day came and a group of orcs were walking through the forest. Ujin cursed as he didn't expect there to be so many of them at all. Never ending an old man was ordered to keep his mouth shut and was useful for the battle seeing the signs of battle. Among the trees, the man realized that the battle had begun. He thought the problem was on this side he wouldn't be able to deal a fatal blow. On orc warriors that with the help of available items and using skeleton warriors as bait will not work, because they can't survive. Ah, come to think of it. Do the skeleton warriors know how to shoot arrows later the skeleton warriors are called? And now Kim Woo Jin is standing in front of the orc boss again. He doesn't seem too worried today. Well, it's time to start the second round. The orc fang on his chest had been activated. He got up from his throne and went to meet the man. Then he pushed off the ground and jumped high to hit the young man. But he was distracted by an arrow flying at his axe. He looked to the side and saw two skeleton warriors shooting arrows at him, orcs rushing towards them, while they continued. To attack him, when the man thought the warrior skeleton also knew how to shoot arrows, everything was going according to plan. Then, after that, Kim Woo Jin jumped at him from behind. And after that, he managed to tear the rope with fangs around his neck from the orc and take it for himself. And now he has received it. Then, after that, the orc warrior weakened significantly, and its strength also decreased. The monster hit the man and he fell back, but a poisoned arrow flew at him and hit him right in the leg. Now that the guy had this fang, his attack would finally be able to reach the orc. There was just one more thing he had to do now. Get a weapon that can cut off his head. The fight between the skeleton and the orc continued, and the guy managed to poison him a hundred times the axe he was using had something in it. The skeleton soldier took the axe from the orc and swung it at him. It should have been the perfect weapon to behead him. Suddenly the blonde man who was in the tree heard a strange sound. Cry, what is that? This is not a cry made by a normal orc. It is someone nearby fighting an orc dam warrior. Who is this person? We need to clear up the situation and report everything to the guild as quickly as possible. The person soared high above the density of trees and landed near where the skeleton orc warrior and the person were gathered. He didn't feel the presence of other players, so this guy was fighting alone against the orc champion. How come we need to report this to the guild now and run back to the forest? But he didn't have time to run far. When the arrow flew towards him, the blonde man didn't understand what had happened and who shot him. Maybe that person was watching him, that bastard. So he won't do it. But after that, he wasn't blabbering about who killed the orc warrior. Suddenly someone appeared behind him. It was a warrior from the skeleton guild, and this same warrior killed the blonde man. Then after that, at the same time someone from the Skull Guild crossed out a photo of a blonde guy in a notebook who was now killed in cold blood, and only five people remained. But after that, a man sitting in a tree asked what could be better than fighting orcs, but killed another player. Then he called the newcomer and said that half of the items from this person belong to the guild need not forget to share them. Newcomers ask not to worry. And then I asked the blonde guy if he was going to kill the guy. The man says he is not on the list. However, he must be killed and the prize is taken. If there is a chance, that person will object, because that person is a monster going against the orc champion isn't that dangerous. But the mentor has thought of everything. The person will be very tired. After the battle and getting rid of him would be a bad thing. It's as easy as taking candy from a kid than the guy sitting on top of his sister-in-law says he's going to spill it all on his friend and now just let him go along with it. Then he took the dead man's body and dragged it to where Kim Woo Jin was. He said that the orcs would do their job if you throw them the corpses standing in the shelter. Then after that, Kim heard all this and he frowned. There were many people in the clearing where the orcs and warriors were recently fighting against the orcs. The master of one of the guilds said that they dealt with it much faster than he thought they would handle this dungeon in such a short time. If they continue in the same spirit, the master replies that everything is correct, but from then on they will not be so enthusiastic and will go back. 
On the first occasion, the soldier asked him what he meant, and he answered that the infantry was finished. Then everyone will prepare to attack the orc champion. They all have to start preparing for the main event. Signs flash above the heads of all the warriors that say, you have defeated the orc champion. All the soldiers stood up so shocked that they opened their mouths and couldn't believe what they saw. What kind of nonsense is this, damn it, and who is doing it? How could this happen after all the main groups of each guild had to engage in battle with the orcs? A warrior approached the Lion Lord and asked what happened. Did this mean the missing people from the Lion Guild were still alive? The master replied that he was not sure, and that he thought that the people from the Lion Guild were bluffing. While his axe was stained with the blood of slain orcs and lay on the ground, Kim Jin's level has been raised, the champion orc hunter achievement has been received, and he received a catalog as a new catalog reward. It would be nice if he gave the person a new useful skill when something flashed in front of the person he saw the Grim Reaper book in front of him. So it turns out to be like an inventory, where you can store undead in addition to ability upgrades. If you put it out there, it's worth a try. When he took the book, the skeleton immediately disappeared. Something unexpected happened, and the person realized that the need to attack the monster with his hands was gone. Instead, he would just summon the skeleton army right away. After he entered the dungeon with this book, the most important weakness of the skeleton army summoning skill disappeared. While his master ran somewhere followed by his soldiers who asked him where he was going, because the orc warrior had already been killed, he answered in a threatening tone whether they thought he didn't know. Then why is he running this fool doesn't understand that someone needs to at least see what happened to explain? What would he say to Mr. Park Yong Wan? When they all came out from there, the soldier who was the guild's skeleton soldiers looked out from behind the tree. Unfortunately, the orc warriors were defeated faster than they expected. They had to change their plans immediately. They were going to leave the guy who was killing the orcs alone and get rid of the remaining targets first. But what happened to the newbie who was just cleaning up the long hair answered that he told the guy to follow him immediately. After he finished, and he would teach him a lesson again as soon as he returned, if their identities were revealed here. The higher-ups will be so worried this can't be allowed in the worst-case scenario they will have to be ready to commit suicide. They don't have any more time, so they had to move and hide as much as possible. The commander's skull told everyone to stop because something was going to happen. It was a beginner running, and why was he running with such a sound? But then when they saw the warrior's skeleton behind that person's back, they understood everything he could do. Instead of a newbie going and provoking the guy, the blonde guy shouted at the newbie that he was a jerk and why he brought these skeleton soldiers with him. What should they do now? He fried himself to his master and asked the same question because now, because of this bastard newcomer's location and the fact that the guy attacked them, does he know something? If the battle continues, then it will attract the attention of other guilds too. And if that happens, then they will all be over, even if he had to do it and leave the mission unfinished. And they have to get rid of this guy and then destroy all traces. Houston turned to his friends and asked if everyone was ready to attack. Then they started fighting with the skeletons. But in the end, they all lay on the floor. The commander noticed that there were no new arrivals. What a jerk he betrayed them. Saw the new man was Kim Woo Jin. He suddenly realized his mistake was only half of the people who survived in his previous life. Then at this time, you could see that the person was emitting a black aura from his eyes. And at the same time, Kim Woo Jin was sitting in front of the man who currently looked limp. Then after that, in this person's memory, he couldn't find any information related to the Messiah Guild. Even in the past, this person was listed as missing. Looks like it's time to visit Skull Head. The Kim Guild bandaged the face of a dead novice and went into the forest. He was very lucky to find the connection between the Skull Guild and the Messiah Guild. But first, we have to solve it with a stone. The commander of the Skull Guild stood up and asked, Who was that bastard, and where did he come from? He started screaming at the guy to get out of there. Kim Woo Jin was favored by luck because everyone from his budding memories gathered here. The skeleton warriors swung their axes at the others and they shouted. They said, wait, 
The team lay on the ground while Kim Woo Jin walked towards him with a slow gait. This bastard killed everyone without any doubt of conscience. That means he must have been killed. Before he told the guy that he didn't know who he was, but he definitely wouldn't know anything from the guy, even if he got out of there alive. He would just do it. Becomes an obstacle for the leader, and there is only one way for him to draw his sword. Kim thought if the man decided to commit suicide, he went further and did a completely useless act. And it could not be otherwise. He should thank him, because he just said that he had information. After that, Kim Woo Jin activated the Eye of Anubis. A building appeared in my memory, this great change that had opened the world to the world would allow Japan to progress. They would collaborate with the outsider Lisi from the Messiah Guild to lay the foundation, and then spread his influence in Xiongjong, would go to Korea and become a member of the Skull Guild to devote himself to serving his home country. If they could get dungeons and items in Japan, including everything that appeared in Korea, then they will be able to create something stronger than before, and it will be called Yamato Country. The man in the kimono said all this to the brunette, who was the skull commander. Then someone introduced them to So Chong, to the people who would guide him on his journey, representatives of the Japanese elite who would help restore the Yamato nation. He was so surprised to see a man that it was a great honor for him to know and think, that he would need a master archer and a swordsman. He bowed to these masters to pay his respects to them. There is one person you have to get rid of. When the level dungeon opens, I asked what kind of man he was and was told that he was a Korean dungeon broker. He is a good person, but he got in the way of their Japanese broker. They had to get rid of him no matter what the name of the Korean talent broker was. His name is O.C. Chan. After seeing all the memories, Kim Woo Jin hoped the reason for committing suicide would be different. However, it seems it is all about pride, and it addresses the man even at his worst. They trusted each other and fought together before he came back. He had conquered many dungeons together with a master archer and a master swordsman who always moves forward to save the world. The man wants to be like them. And it is known that they are not just teachers, but they are also his moral supporters. They were beloved companions to whom he could entrust his life, even in the toughest fights. But that's what he thought. Before, but now, the man realized that they were no different from Lee S.I. Jun. This time, he couldn't let them do what they planned. Did they say that their next target was Sai Chan? However, after that, the dungeon broker was talented enough to be on their blacklist. The fact that he is not in her memory means that the assassination would have been successful if the Yamato took her place. Then Lee Se-Joon will benefit as long as he remains on the blacklist efforts to get rid of O.C. Chan will not stop them. Will find him like a moth finds the light. Maybe he will find a way to weaken their group. Kim Woo-jin also needed a broker who could find a dungeon for him. So everything was going pretty well. He had finished all his tasks, and now he had to start preparing the entrance to the dungeon. Then, after that, in the car, the man asked for his sunbeam. If it is always quiet near the gate, the second man replies that there is no possibility that a monster will come out of the gate. So there was only silence here as soon as they finished the dungeon, the chaos would start immediately, so that the person can rest for now, and also as soon as the players complete the dungeon, everyone will interview them. The man who called his partner stupid says that's not the reason, but because the players will fight each other to get the items except the Messiah Guild. Everyone will try to get at least one additional item. But in any case, nothing has started yet. You just need to sleep because soon they won't be able to sleep at all. While looking at the man, his colleague called him and pointed his finger. However, he became angry with annoyance and asked what else was boring for him. But the man only said one word. The man turned around and saw one player coming out of the gate, Kim Woo Jin. This meant the A-level dungeon had been cleared, and it was tedious to care for the injured. Kim Woo Jin was the first to fall to the ground. The players will start coming out of the gate now, so we have to quickly bring the stretcher. His colleague answered the man that there seems to be a problem. They were there, and he replied that the situation was even worse than he had expected. They were already making loud headlines on the news that the man returned from the dungeon alone. 
Park Young crumpled the newspaper in his hand and swore he didn't understand how his men couldn't find the player who had defeated the Orc champion. Until now, it is still a question of who defeated the Orc champion. It made Park Yong Wan feel angry because he had spent a lot of money to fund all of them. Seen his men bowing before Park Yong Wan with very frightened expressions. They promised not to repeat the mistake in the future. But because he was so disappointed, Park Yong Wan wouldn't give them another chance. Park Yong Wan felt that he had lost a lot and warned them to return five times the funds he had spent within seven days. Hearing this, his three subordinates were very surprised by the large amount of funds. After that, Park Yong Wan asked his secretary about Kim Woo Jin, who was said to be hospitalized. The secretary confirmed this and said that the man was injured while in the dungeon. Hearing that then, Park Yong Wan glanced sarcastically, thinking that everyone was useless there. The secretary added that if the wound Kim Woo Jin got was not from a monster, Park Yong Wan guessed that he was attacked by another guild. The secretary didn't know for sure, and she suggested listening to the man's story first. The two of them rushed to the hospital and hoped that Kim Woo Jin wouldn't open his mouth to talk to someone. Inside the hospital building, a bespectacled man in a neat suit had just come out of a patient's room while bowing in respectful greeting. He politely told Kim Woo Jin to contact the guild immediately if he remembered anything. Then the man left with a slightly annoyed face because he didn't get any information from Kim Woo Jin, so he felt confused about what to tell the boss. The man waited for the elevator doors to open as he stared blankly ahead of him, wondering why Park Yong Wan's pavilion was asking Kim Woo Jin. Moments later, the elevator doors opened. The man immediately got into it, and at the same time, Park Yong Wan passed by him. The two of them passed each other. Seeing the look on the face of the man who had just passed him made Park Yong Wan suspect that Kim Woo Jin didn't want to talk. The two of them finally arrived at Kim Woo Jin's room. After that, Park Yong Wan immediately sat beside his bed to talk to the man. Kim Woo Jin said that he didn't know much about the Skull Guild but he felt that the guild was a little suspicious. Then Kim Woo Jin said that when he was scouting, he saw them attacking the orc champion. Kim Woo Jin was sure that they were all dead, so it was likely that the item was taken by another guild. The person Kim Woo Jin saw last time could use the invisibility skill of the soundless hunter. Hearing that, Park Yong Wan responded that he knew that the user would not be detected. He felt that they only aimed to kill orc champions and players. Kim Woo Jin confirmed it, and if only he hadn't gotten blood poisoning, he would have died. According to Park Yong Wan, that man was still lucky because no one would find out if the Skull Guild had been exterminated there. But Kim Woo Jin was going to stay safe for the time being, so he asked him about the news at the Phoenix Guild. Hearing the name of the guild made Park Yong Wan furious because he was very upset with them for making him lose so many things. Park Yong Wan frowned and stared ahead of him, and in his mind he thought that he wouldn't let the Skull Guild just run away. Park Yong Wan would look for them to ask for his money back. He thought that the information provided by Kim Woo Jin was quite useful to him. Park Yong Wan immediately got up from his seat and asked Kim Woo Jin what he wanted. But Kim Woo Jin felt that he didn't understand the man's intentions. Park Yong Wan glanced sarcastically at him and told him to pretend. The man knew that Kim Woo Jin had been spying on his people. Kim Woo Jin was silent for a moment, and then he said that he wanted to find someone. The person he was looking for was a broker named Oh Sechen, and according to the rumors Kim Woo Jin got, that person was very talented. Because of Kim Woo Jin's current status, he couldn't get any information about the person, so he wanted that from Park Yong Wan. Park Yong Wan was curious how he could find out about Oh Sechen. After their conversation was over, Park Yong Wan decided to go back, but first he reminded Kim Woo Jin to never take calls from anyone from now on. He warned him not to act arrogant because of his ability to get his own customers. Park Yong Wan walked out of the patient room together with his secretary, but then he looked back to warn him one more thing. If Kim Woo Jin dared to violate him, then he would not remain silent. Kim Woo Jin replied sarcastically if he understood his words. After that, Park Yong Wan and his secretary left the place. Kim Woo Jin got up from his bed and went to the window. He stared outside blankly. 
In his mind, he thought that Park Yong Wan still didn't trust him completely, even though it was according to plan. Park Yong Wan still didn't know anything about the relationship between Messiah and the Skull Guild. But right now, he was still investigating. He thought that Lee Sejun, the sword master or the archery master, would pay more attention to Park Yong Wan. That way, for the time being, Lee Sejun and Park Yong Wan would be occupied with each other so that he could focus more on becoming stronger. A luxurious black sedan was seen driving on the road. Inside the car was Park Yong Wan, who was ranting because he had just seen the news he got from the media about Guild Skull becoming successful without having a sponsor. Park Yong Wan suspected that they were selling domestic items to foreigners. Seeing this, Park Yong Wan decided to investigate the black market connected overseas. Park Yong Wan felt confident that if he did that, he would be able to meet the merchants who sold their goods. Park Yong Wan smiled sarcastically, and in his mind, he suspected that it also had something to do with the Eastern powers. The next morning saw Kim Woo Jin walking out of the hospital building. After that, Kim Woo Jin took out his cell phone from his pocket because he felt that it was time for him to take a call. At the same time, when Kim Woo Jin had just picked up his cell phone, there was an incoming call. Wu Jin picked it up and then realized that it was Oh Se Chan. Oh Se Chan told Kim Wu Jin that he had heard about him wanting to do business with him. Kim Wu Jin confirmed it and told him that he was looking for a dungeon. But Oh Se Chan would decide after seeing his skills. Then he sent the details to Kim Wu Jin's cell phone. A few moments later, a message arrived on his cell phone. It was a detailed information sent by Oh Sae Chan to test Kim Woo Jin's ability first. It was meant to test him so that they would know if Kim Woo Jin would be useful for their business. The message read that Kim Woo Jin would be doing cobalt extermination with a C plus level dungeon and one floor. Elsewhere in a downtown building, Oh Sae Chan was with his junior. The junior asked him who the person he had just called was. Then Oh Sae Chan answered that it was just a new person that Park Yong Wan recommended to him. Immediately, his junior bowed his head while sighing, because he remembered the previous incident that there was someone who wanted to kill his brother. But Oh Se Chan did not feel worried because according to him people who worked under Park Yong Wan, they must want to do business with him. Even if they couldn't finish their exams, it didn't matter. Even if they couldn't finish the exam, it didn't matter. Oh Se Chan also didn't mind if they wanted to kill him and would even welcome it if they had good skills. That way, they would be very useful in possibly destroying all the dungeons and ending this game. Oh, Seichan felt that they needed people like that. Hearing that, his brother smiled widely and told his brother with great confidence that the person he was looking for was here now while pointing to himself. But his brother rejected the statement and said that he was just a loudmouth but didn't have the skills to complete the dungeon by himself. Then, Oh Seichan told him that he sent Kim Woo Jin to the Cobalt Dungeon. He felt impatient to see him finish the dungeon. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin's car was seen arriving at a large empty lot. After that, he got out of the car and looked around the place. Underneath was a portal into the Cobalt Dungeon. Kim Woo Jin suspected that the man was deliberately making the test difficult by using a dungeon that was difficult for normal players to complete. But not thinking for long, Kim Woo Jin immediately went down to enter the portal to the dungeon. In a place far from the empty land, there was a woman who was observing Kim Woo Jin's movements using her binoculars. Then she reported to Oh Se Chan via walkie-talkie that Kim Woo Jin had entered the dungeon. Then she asked her boss if it was necessary to start the timer now. Hearing the news, Oh Se Chan didn't expect the man to have arrived and asked the woman if Kim Woo Jin had prepared anything. The woman replied that Kim Woo Jin did not bring anything into the dungeon. Hearing that made Oh Se Chan surprised. He thought that Kim Woo Jin was very careless. In a restaurant, there were three men having a conversation. A man named Kim Jae Hoon from the Messiah Guild was talking about yesterday's events in the dungeon. Kim Jae Hoon regretted that they went home with nothing but at least not many injuries but his words offended the two masters. The master said in a high tone that they did not accept his statement that said that not many were injured, even though five of his students died in there. Suddenly, 
Kim Jae-hoon immediately fell silent and realized that he had misspoken, and then he tried to straighten out the meaning of his words. The master did not believe that their people were killed by weak beings like orcs, so this was not something that could be ignored. Feeling guilty for his words, Kim Jae-hoon immediately bowed before the two masters and apologized to them. Then Kim Jae-hoon asked for time to integrate the case once again. Then the master sarcastically replied that he didn't need to do that because they had already invested in it themselves. Then the master poured him a drink while insinuating that they already felt humiliated at this time. The master continued to pour the water until it spilled. He seemed to be bullying Kim Jae-hoon. After that, the two of them immediately left him alone in that place. Kim Jae-hoon regretted his actions for underestimating the master archer and master swordsman. Then he decided that he had to repair their relationship immediately. The two masters walked to the car after coming out of the restaurant. Sword Archer was seen calling someone to immediately deal with the damage on their side. Then in the car, Master Swordsman asked Master Archer about the situation. Master Archer replied that the assassination was not done by the people on the hit list, which can be interpreted that those who did it were not very reliable people. Their next target was the Phoenix Guild, since they were the only ones left. Master Swordsman said that if this wasn't one of the targets, then it was possible that someone was hiding their strength on purpose. Master Archer said that if that was the case, then it meant that this was done by another group that they didn't know about yet. It was nighttime on the rooftop of a building near the Cobalt Dungeon in Songpo Dong, Ilsan Gu. There were two people there chatting. They were both player observers. One of the men asked his friend if they could take a break because after all the players had entered today. But his friend explained that the person entered the dungeon alone. He believes that the person will soon die, which means that the dungeon gate will be active again. Right at the same time, there was a bright shining light. Suddenly, the two of them immediately looked behind them both. One of the men did not expect and realized it was not something that happened when the dungeon was completed. He explained that the dungeon was not a dungeon that could be completed, even with many players. Then they immediately took the binoculars to observe the player who just got out of there. But they both lost track of Kim Woojin who had left first by driving his car quickly. Inside a building, we could hear Oh Sechen yelling at his men for losing track of Kim Woojin. Oh Sechen yelled at them and threatened that he wouldn't give them a paycheck for being incompetent at their duties. The secretary lady who heard this immediately told him that they didn't pay the two of them. The lady said that the two of them came to help him because they came from Oh Sechan's hometown. They were only promised a drink with Oh Sechan in return. Oh Sechan folded his hands and turned his face away. He felt embarrassed for being mistaken and then argued that he had decided to stop drinking today. The secretary told Oh Sechan not to worry about Kim Woo Jin because she was sure that he would call them soon if he planned to cooperate. Then Secretary Lee hurried away and left the place. Oh Sechan sat in Hai's work chair. In his mind, he couldn't believe that Kim Woo Jin had managed to clean up his dungeon in just half a day, so he was the man he had been looking for because he met his criteria. Kim Woo Jin was seen driving down the street. He recalled the time when he just got out of the dungeon and found a walkie-talkie and a letter on top of his car. Kim Woo Jin wondered in his mind if they were planning to cooperate with him or not at all. It made Kim Woo Jin feel attracted to him. In the car, Kim Jae Hoon looked very frustrated. He put his head down on the steering wheel. In his mind, he felt ashamed to face the master, so he thought of asking Yang Ji Ho for help. At the same time, his cell phone rang, indicating that someone was calling him. After picking up the phone, Kim Jae Hoon looked very surprised. Then he rushed to his destination. On the other hand, Park Yong Wan was seen talking to someone with a sharp gaze, like he was talking about something serious. The man in front of him said that he already understood what he had to do, then asked him if Park Yong Wan had discussed it with someone he had to escort. Then Park Yong Wan answers if he hasn't told him yet, but will contact him soon after this. Park Yong Wan says that he just has to save the man and the rest will be his own responsibility. On the balcony of the place, Kim Jae-hoon is watching the two of them. Kim Jae-hoon wondered how much Park Yong-wan already knew about the Skull Guild. Suddenly from behind him, 
A man appeared and immediately told Kim Jae-hoon that he recognized Park Yong-wan's greatness, but he thought that even though Park Yong-wan had a lot of resources, the man would not know about the Skull Guild. The man said if Park Yong-wan wanted to know more about the Skull Guild for business reasons, but he also said something strange. Then the man told Kim Jae-hoon that Park Yong-wan once said that he knew about the events in the A-plus level dungeon. Kim Jae-hoon was shocked instantly. Then he thought that if this was true, then he couldn't solve this problem by himself. But if Kim Jae-hoon were to report to the master, he would definitely be punished. Kim Jae-hoon felt confused and went awry. Then he looked back at Park Yong-wan, who was with a man he didn't recognize. Feeling curious, Kim Jae-hoon asked him who the person next to Park Yong-wan was. Then the man replied that the person was Jong Hoon Young, who often did business with Park Yong-wan. Jong Hoon Young finally accepted the deal given by him, as long as he gave him money without any ties to the guild. Jong Hoon Young would do it like a mercenary player. After that, Park Yong-wan left from there. Seen on the balcony, Kim Jae-hoon together with the man were still watching Park Yong-wan who was walking out of the place. Then Kim Jae-hoon thanked the man for giving his information. Then Kim Jae-hoon caught up with Jong hoon Young, who seemed to be alone in his seat. Kim Jae-hoon asked permission to talk to him for a moment. Seeing the man's arrival, Jong hoon Young immediately realized that he was Kim Jae-hoon from the Messiah Guild. Without further ado, Kim Jae-hoon immediately persuaded the man to cooperate with their messiah guild. Feeling that it was very sudden, Jong hoon Young asked for the reason and asked for an explanation. Kim Jae-hoon looked at him with a serious gaze and said that he was offering a business that could benefit him. In the car, the female secretary told Park yong wan that they had followed his directions and had secured the public dungeon. But he felt that this wasn't the way the boss wanted it then suggested to him to do it himself so that it could become something big. But Park Yong-wan thought it was enough. After all, there would be a response from the Skull Guild soon. Kim Jae-hoon was still sitting there alone. He seemed to be biting his fingernails like someone who had a lot on his mind. In his mind, he wondered what Park Yong-wan was planning to do. He remembered the words of Jong hoon Young, who told him about Kim Woo-jin's figure. Kim Jae-hoon looked at his cell phone screen, which had the name Kim Woo-jin. It was the name that participated in the A-plus class dungeon before. Kim Jae-hoon couldn't believe that the man was facing the veterans of the Skull Guild alone. Kim Jae-hoon felt that this was just a bait, and now he felt indecisive whether to eat the bait or not. Kim Woo-jin parked his car in front of a big house. Then he called someone with the walkie-talkie. He was talking to Oh Sechan, who was waiting to hear information from him. Oh Sechan said that he had finished earlier than he expected. Kim Woo Jin said that he only showed his skills because that person asked him to. Then Oh Sechan mentioned the dungeon that Kim Woo Jin wanted to buy and told him that he had put the dungeon list in the locker of the 19 Ilsan station. Then Kim Woo Jin said that he would contact him in the next few days and then turned off the line. Oh, Seichun's brother tried to convince his brother that he really wanted to deal with him because his gut feeling told him that he was a dangerous man. Oh, Seichun turned to his brother while mocking him if his premonition never happened before. Oh, Seichun also explained to him that this was normal and the risk of a broker. Kim Woo Jin and Park Yong Wan were seen sitting opposite each other talking about something. After hearing the explanation from Park Yong Wan, it made Kim Woo Jin feel like he was just being used as bait by the man. Park Young Wan also realized that. But they had to do it, because they couldn't just sit around and make more lives fly. Then Park Young Wan also said that he had prepared a decent person to protect him. He convinced Kim Woo Jin to go into the dungeon and trust him. But Kim Woo Jin protested because what they were risking was his life. Actually, Park Young Wan also felt guilty, but he was also indebted to them and Park Yong Wan wasn't the type of person who could live with debt. Finally, Kim Woo Jin accepted it, but in return, he asked for a very large amount of money to him. Park Yong Wan finally agreed to that. Kim Woo Jin and Park Yong Wan both smiled sarcastically because they had both gotten what they wanted. After that, Park Yong Wan told his secretary to bring something. Then his secretary immediately brought a paper and gave it to Kim Woo Jin. It was an item that the boss prepared for him because the stronger he was, the greater his chances of survival were. 
Kim Woo Jin walked out of Park Yong Wan's residence. He didn't expect that Park Yong Wan had been in contact with the Skull Guild before meeting him. Then Kim Woo Jin looked at Park Yong Wan's residence sarcastically and thought that the man was a traitor. But even so, Kim Woo Jin felt very happy because he got a gift item that was very useful to him. Elsewhere in the dungeon, a group of men were walking along the path between the cliffs. One of the men complained because he could no longer stand being in this dungeon. Then the chairman who was in front yelled at him and told him to just do his job. He trusted Park Yong Wan, who would send reinforcements soon. But one of the men protested that this was unfair to them. It made the chairman even angrier and told them to just focus on killing the monsters in this dungeon. Behind them was a creepy figure with flaming eyes who was staring at the group of men. At night, right under the railroad crossing bridge, there was a group of men gathering. Jong Hoon Young called Park Yong Wan and told him that he was ready to leave. After turning off the phone, Jong Hoon Young immediately walked over to Kim Jae Hoon, who was standing in front of him. On the hood of the car was a suitcase containing some money. But according to Jong Hoon Young, that amount was still not enough to betray Park Yong Wan. Then Kim Jae Hoon said that he would give the rest when they had done the job, and he could even get another trader to prepare it for him. But instead of that, Jong Hoon Young wanted to make a deal with the Messiah Guild, and if Kim Jae Hoon would agree to it, then he wouldn't have to pay more. But Kim Jae Hoon refused because the job was not related to the Messiah Guild, and it was a personal matter. After finalizing their deal, Kim Jae Hoon finally left them. Young Jong Hoon looked very happy because he thought that when he finished this job, he would soon become wealthy. One of his men quipped that he didn't expect there to be such a person in the Messiah Guild. Then Jong Hoon Young said that the Messiah members were all humans except Lee Se Jun. But no matter what, Jong Hoon Young still felt happy because this was his chance to enjoy life. Elsewhere were the three men who had just exited the dungeon gate. They were all Skull Guild survivors. Then someone from the Firebird Guild passed by them and wondered in his mind what had happened to their guild members. Even though those people were the best people from Park Yan Wan's faction. Instantly, the man turned around to call the three men. He asked them what had happened to his guild members in there because by knowing it, he could tell their families. The man begged them to tell the truth. Then one of the big men grinned evilly and replied that they had been ripped to shreds and torn to pieces. After that, they immediately got into the car and sped off. Hearing that answer made the man with glasses feel very panicked. Inside the car, the purple-haired man was staring at his cell phone screen. The man said to the big man beside him and reminded him of his father's words telling them to try not to do anything that attracts attention. Then the man called Kim Jae Hoon to give him the news that they had gotten out of the dungeon and asked if there was a new mission for them. Then the man replied that he had found a new target who seemed to be entering the dungeon tonight, so he told him to hurry to the location. Not long after that, the man got the details of the information. Inside the luxurious building was Park Yong Wan, who was staring blankly out the window like someone who had a lot on his mind. The man was thinking of ways to make good use of the Skull Guild so that it could be a huge advantage for him. He thought that even if Kim Woo Jin died, then it would be a loss if he only got the Skull Guild information. Instantly, the man glanced at his watch and realized that they should have been in the dungeon by now. Kim Woo Jin walked near a dungeon where in front of him was a group of men. Jong Hoon Young, who realized his arrival, immediately greeted and invited him to join. He immediately introduced himself to Kim Woo Jin, then told him that there was one more member coming. Not long after that came a car approaching the place. Suddenly, Kim Woo Jin immediately turned to them with a sardonic look. Seeing their arrival, Kim Woo Jin immediately asked where the toilet was. He seemed to want to avoid the group of men. Finally, Jong Hoon Young drove him to the back toilet. When he came out of the restroom, Jong Hoon Young told Kim Woo Jin that he would protect him like Park Yong Wan told him to. After that, they walked towards the dungeon while talking. Jong Hoon Young told Kim Woo Jin that in the dungeon they wouldn't be around. Hearing that, Kim Woo Jin asked if it meant that they would let him move alone. Jong Hoon Young calmed him down and answered that they would be around him and provide escort. 
Then Jong Hoon Young explained that the raid would happen on the second floor. Therefore, if they were to attack each other on the first floor, it would make it more difficult to complete the dungeon, said Jong Hoon Young. The man glanced at Kim Woo Jin, then tried to convince him that they were professionals, so told him to trust them and just enter the dungeon. After that, Kim Woo Jin stepped into the dungeon while Jong Hoon Young looked at him with a sly smile. Everything went very smoothly, according to his plan. They were all inside the dungeon. A screen appeared in front of them, telling them that they had to kill a goblin hiding somewhere to get to the next floor. Then, Jong Hoon Young instructed them all to split up and act individually. Since Kim Woo Jin seemed to come alone, he told one of his people to help him. After that, a man named Jin Wook appointed himself to accompany Kim Woo Jin. Finally, they split up to hunt and kill the goblins. Jong Hoon Young looked at Kim Woo Jin and nodded to him as if giving a signal. Then Kim Woo Jin returned the nod and realized that the fight would take place on the second floor. The purple haired man from the Messiah Guild asked the man next to him why they didn't arrest Kim Woo Jin now because he was worried that they wouldn't get anything. Kim Jae Hoon explained that he had hired people who would make sure Kim Woo Jin got to the second floor without any problems. But if things got worse with Kim Woo Jin running away and hiding, then it would be annoying for him. In his mind, he thought that when this was over, then young Jong Hoon would take care of everything. Jong Hoon Young asked his men what Kim Woo Jin did. Then his men answered that Kim Woo Jin's blood poisoning alcohol skill was better than he imagined during the orc hunt. Hearing that, Jong Hoon Young furrowed his brows while holding his chin like he was thinking hard. The man thought that there was something extraordinary about blood poisoning. This was all going too smoothly for Jong Hoon Young. He thought it wasn't like Park Yong Wan and Kim Jae Hoon were spending money on something unwarranted. Then he asked his men if Kim Woo Jin was still together with Jin Wook. Young Jong Hoon decided to go alone with Kim Woo Jin because he wanted to make face with the man to gain his trust. Then they would catch him after the floor was cleared. Jong Hoon Young and his men had been looking around for Kim Woo Jin's whereabouts, but they found no trace of him, even though they were very sure that Kim Woo Jin was around that place. Then Jong Hoon Young smelled blood around that place, and he was very sure that they were nearby. Jong Hoon Young also felt strange because Jin Wook should have been able to smell them, but he didn't show himself. It was so quiet and still that they all felt a little strange. Suddenly, they were all surprised to see Jin Wook and Kim Woo Jin, who were already lying there in a bad condition. They decided to check Jin Wook's condition first. Then Jong Hoon Young told the others to keep an eye around while Min Sik was told to heal Jin Wook. Jin Wook was spurting a lot of blood from his mouth due to the wound on his neck area. The man tried to say something, but Min Sik told him not to try to speak, as otherwise the bleeding wouldn't stop. Min Sik held the wound on Jin Wook's neck while Jin Wook pointed at Kim Woo Jin. Seeing that, Min Sik guessed that Jin Wook told him to help the man, but Min Sik said that he didn't care about him. Jong Hoon Young looks at them behind him and asks how his condition is. Min Sik told them that Jin Wook's condition was deeply injured so he couldn't survive anymore. Hearing that, Jong Hoon Young wondered what really happened. He thought it was impossible for the two of them to attack each other because Kim Woo Jin thought they were on the same side. It crossed his mind that this was Kim Jae Hoon's doing and suspected that he was trying to shut them up. Suddenly behind Min Sik, a skull monster appeared and attacked him in a brutal manner. Seeing that, Jong Hoon Young suspects that this is a bait because the main target is Min Sik's healer so that it makes Jin Wook's condition half dead like that and deliberately sets a trap so that it can get rid of the healer first because he is the only one who is an expert in healing. Instantly, Jong Hoon Young realized that he had been deceived by Kim Woo Jin. Indeed, from the beginning, Jong Hoon Young had suspected him because of this strange quest. Now the three of them were surrounded by skull monsters. On the other hand, a group of men from the Skull Guild, along with Kim Jae Hoon, were hunting the goblins. Not long after that, another group of goblins came towards them. Very easily, the big man took the body of the goblin monster and tore it apart. In just a moment, he managed to kill several goblins in a very brutal way. Meanwhile, Jong Hoon Young was seen lying next to a tree. Then in front of him was Kim Woo Jin 
who said to him that it was not surprising to him that the player used his power only for personal gain, but his desire had crossed the line. Kim Woo Jin repeated the words that Jong Hoon Young had said that a person's life had a price. Hearing that made him surprised and wondered how the man knew that. It turned out that at the time when they were discussing the plan in a cafe, Kim Woo Jin was right behind them. So Kim Woo Jin heard all their conversations at that time. Then Kim Woo Jin looked sharply at him while pulling out his sword. After that, Kim Woo Jin slashed Jong Hoon Young's head without hesitation and immediately left him. Kim Woojin faced the goblin. Then he said that in his previous life, the goblin was also hiding in the same position when they entered this dungeon. Then Kim Woojin immediately ended it by killing the goblin so he could go to the next floor. Immediately, the screen on the system appeared, telling him that he had completed the first floor dungeon. Not far from Kim Woojin's existence, there was a group of skull guilds who were surprised to see a very bright light indicating that the first floor had been completed. Kim Jae-hoon immediately felt a little panicked and wondered what exactly happened. In his mind, he thought that if they found a goblin, they should not kill it immediately, but give a signal to it. Seeing his panicked expression, the purple-haired man guessed that his plan had failed. According to him, if the first floor was suddenly finished, it meant that they would go up and wait for them, and surely when they reached the second floor, they would immediately come to ambush them. The man was able to read the plan so clearly that they flew to the gate to the second floor immediately. But Kim Jae-hoon still didn't expect that they would stab him in the back like this. In front of Kim Woo-jin, there was now a huge door, and without thinking, he rushed to enter it. Instantly, the screen on the system popped up telling him that he had entered the second floor. Inside the office building, Park Yong Wan and his secretary were discussing the items Kim Woo Jin had bought before entering the dungeon. The secretary told him that Kim Woo Jin had bought a sample bottle. The woman reported that because she found it strange that the monsters in the dungeon couldn't be sold at a high price. So it was impossible for that man to collect trash when his own life was being threatened. Park Yong Wan wondered what exactly that man was planning. The group of men from the Skull Guild had arrived in front of the gate that led to the second floor. Seeing the open door, the purple-haired man guessed that they were already inside the second floor and thought that they would probably be ambushed once they got there. The big man in the back insinuated Kim Jae-hoon because he thought it was his fault. Kim Jae-hoon glanced at Jung Hoon Young while cursing the man in his heart. After that, they prepared to enter the second floor while holding their respective swords. When they got inside the second floor, they didn't realize that they didn't do as he expected. Then, Jung Hoon Young yelled for them because he thought they had hidden. Suddenly, as Jung Hoon Young stepped forward, he accidentally broke a rope that contained a trap. At the same time, there were dozens of arrows that hit their bodies. It was a sample bottle that contained blood, so their bodies were covered in blood from the bottle. Then the man picked it up and didn't expect that they didn't ambush his group and just attacked in this way. Then came Kim Woo Jin, who greeted them from behind. Hearing the voice, Kim Jae Hoon thought it was Jong Hoon Young and immediately gave his protest. But he just realized that it was Kim Woo Jin. As Kim Woo Jin suspected, Kim Jae Hoon thought that he had teamed up with Jong Hoon Young. Kim Woo Jin said that he didn't expect them to chase him into the dungeon and even Kim Jae-hoon from the Messiah Guild. Immediately, there was a sound of water splashing from the lake in front of them. Not long after that, a very large monster appeared from the lake. The monster opened its mouth wide to reveal its entire oral cavity and sharp teeth. Seeing this, they were all immediately shocked and very panicked. The monster immediately came out of the water and devoured the body of one of the men from the Skull Guild. The purple-haired man looked at Kim Woo-jin who was behind them and realized that this was his planned action. Kim Woo-jin showed them the sample bottle and explained that it was goblin blood which was the fresh juice of the lizard warrior's favorite prey. Kim Woo-jin smiled slyly and said that they had just added a special spice to themselves that would surely be a delicious dish for the lizard warrior. Hearing that explanation made Matsumoto very emotional. He flew at Kim Woo-jin with blazing eyes while pointing his sword. There was a fierce battle between Kim Woo-jin and Matsumoto. But when Kim Woo-jin looked at the hilt of Matsumoto's sword, 
he instantly realized that it was a student's sword. At first, Kim Woojin thought that the man was a nobody. Kim Jae-hoon looked around. He was looking for the whereabouts of the people from Jong Hoon Young's group who hadn't shown up. According to him, Kim Woo Jin was not the main problem now, because what the four of them had to do was take care of this dungeon monster. Young Hoon Young was seen trying to stop the monster by himself. Then the man called Kim Jae Hoon to help him. But Kim Jae Hoon was still silent and thought in his mind that if they split into two and Young Hoon Young's group ambushed, then they would all die. Matsumo asked Kim Woo Jin why he knew he was the Swordmaster's student. It was because Kim Woo Jin saw the symbol on the tip of the man's sword hilt. Kim Woo Jin said that he didn't believe that Matsumo was a student. Hearing that, Matsumo felt he was being humiliated and immediately snapped at Kim Woo Jin. The man looked very angry. Seeing his response made Kim Woo Jin feel sure that he was a person who was easily provoked. He thought it would be difficult to fight the man with just a sword, and Kim Woo Jin immediately thought of using other methods. In the middle of their fight, Kim Woo Jin suddenly spat a blood into Matsumo's face. That made Matsumo very furious, then he immediately wiped the blood from his face. Instantly, the screen in the system showed that Matsumo was affected by blood poison. Matsumo was filled with a vengeful aura, and then he immediately activated his trick, so that his sword seemed to emit a brightly lit power. Suddenly, it made Kim Woo Jin surprised. He guessed if it was an attack skill called Guardian of the Light. Matsumo slammed his sword into the ground with such force that it released a storm of wind that attacked Kim Woo Jin. But after that, Matsumo looked exhausted because he could only use the skill once. Matsumo finally regretted that he had gotten carried away when he could have taken the man out of the dungeon alive. Suddenly, Kim Woo Jin was behind Matsumo while pointing a sword at him. Realizing this, Matsumo did not expect the man to be able to avoid his sword skill. In the final moments of his life, Matsumo remembered the old days when he practiced with the master. The master told him that when using the holy sword, once it would make his hands tremble. The master also reminded him that if there is an enemy who already knows the weakness of the sword, he must refrain from using it. Because if Matsumo can't fight monsters and use the holy sword, but doesn't manage to defeat it in one slash, then he will end up being preyed upon by the monster. Sure enough, this time Matsumo met the monster. Kim Woo Jin slashed Matsumo's body with his sword. Seeing this, Jung Hoon Young immediately shouted hysterically for Matsumo. Because he was distracted, he didn't realize that the lizard warrior behind him was attacking him. Instantly, Jung Hoon Young's body was slammed into the tree trunk with great force. Kim Jae Hoon, who saw it from a distance, immediately chuckled because he just realized that those who were so confident in saying they were Kim Sung's students but in reality were unreliable. He thought they were unreliable. Kim Jae-hoon yelled for Kim Woo-jin and persuaded him to finish this dungeon and fight the monsters together. Kim Woo-jin smiled slyly and told him that he didn't need to worry about that. Kim Woo-jin told him that if they all died, then the storyline would be much easier. Hearing this made Kim Jae-hoon immediately feel panic and fear. Suddenly, many skeleton monsters came out from the ground. It was the skeleton soldier that Kim Woo Jin had just resurrected. In addition, Kim Woo Jin was not willing to conspire with people who had planned to kill him. Kim Jae Hoon looked behind him because he realized there was a monster trying to devour him. Then, with quick reflexes, the man finally managed to avoid the lizard warrior. Instantly, the lizard warrior swung its tail to attack Kim Jae Hoon. It made him surrender and could only cover his face with both hands. But at the same time, Jung Hoon Young came to help him. As a result, the man became the target of the lizard warrior. Jung Hoon Young's body was instantly wrapped around the tail of the monster so he couldn't fight back at all. Kim Jae Hoon was still standing in the same place looking at the scene in front of him. In his mind, he thought that there was only one way to get out of that place alive. Jae Hoon who was dealing with monsters. A very unlucky incident cannot be if only fighting alone needs the help of others. If you dare to fight alone, you will most likely die from this asshole monster. The best thing to do now is to leave this place. Danger must be avoided if faced and no one helps just make yourself miserable. A very scary monster. Long fingernails. Jehun would hide for a while until others finished this dungeon. Saving oneself was the top priority that had to be done right now.
There is no need to think about anything as long as the body and soul can be saved properly. Death must be avoided here. Don't let others underestimate death which will only be in vain, because you can't fight monsters alone. Jehun ran very fast to avoid the danger that was lurking around him. There was something passing by that was not very clear to his eyes, but there was indeed something passing in the area around this place. It seemed like Jehun had to be careful when continuing his journey. A man with a very thin skull stuck his gun into the monster. The scary monster immediately screamed in connection. Blood rushed from the monster's body. Skeleton soldier. Jehun, who didn't know that it was a skeleton, didn't expect that the skeleton soldier could move as fast as it did. He was just dumbfounded to see it in front of him. He wanted to run away so that he wouldn't be killed by the monster. But instead, he was engrossed in watching the monster being attacked by the skeleton. Skeleton is like a player from the top level, so he can do this very easily. If he did the same thing like that, it would be difficult to do. After being seen in the area under the monster, it turns out that there is not only one skeleton holder, but there are many. The skeleton beat the monsters one by one. But he didn't believe that if Kim Woo Jin was this strong, it could be possible. This could mean that Kim Woo Jin could have finished off Hoon Yong's team very easily. This was if they didn't show their form at all in this situation. All the skill guild members could have easily been killed in the dungeon A plus ago. He was confused if he thought of an incident like this that was endlessly puzzling. Skeletons continued to attack the big monster. Perhaps the skeletons had the intention to kill the monsters in their own way and power. Jehun was happy that he didn't have to destroy the monster with his own hands. The sudden appearance of the skeleton had been very helpful in saving lives. He observed and was sure that all of this was answered. It seemed like he had to go back and write his report quickly. But unfortunately, the monsters only focused on him and ignored the attacking skeletons. He was very scared and ran very fast to avoid the monsters that were still targeting him. The monsters should have been fighting the skeletons. This monster had a hidden intention, so it continued to target without stopping, very eager to finish him off. Skeletons who still wanted to beat up the running monster. Skeleton wouldn't let the monster get away with it without feeling deep pain. The monster's eyes that were glowing red were staring very sharply. The running monster suddenly fell to the ground very hard. He saw that the monster chasing him had fallen to the ground. Even so, you still have to be careful. The fear is when the monster suddenly wakes up and attacks suddenly. Jehun guessed and confirmed that the skeletons had defeated the evil monster. Hopefully the monster is really dead so that it doesn't continue to target him. If the monster stays alive, then it is likely that when he meets again, he will easily see that he is the person the monster is after. When you wake up, the monster's face is burnt black but its eyes are still bright red. If you look at it, the monster has an increasingly scary appearance. His eyes are active and sharp looking around him. Don't know what the monster was thinking about. It could be that he was strategizing in his mind to finish off the people who had made him so angry. The monster still hadn't given up at all. It stared intently and vengefully. The lizard monster immediately launched its action to attack again. Skeleton, who was still there, also did not want to just stand there. A man named Kim Woojin appeared in front of the skeleton and the lizard monster. Jehun observed that this was very easy for him because thanks to the skeleton that had attracted the attention of this evil lizard monster. He may not understand the current situation. This is a time where people only depend on their levels and items. This should be developed properly and not just focus on that. If this was the case, there would be no progress at all going forward. When completing the dungeon, he was also confused about why he could do and smear his body with this thing. He himself could not explain why it could just happen in front of him. But there are things that are known from lizard monsters, namely that they have very poor eyesight. That is the information in the form of facts that have been obtained before. The point is that you should try to use this. Maybe this can be done well. If not, then you have to look for other solutions that can be done with the right target. Joseph wanted Kim Woo Jin to confirm his opinion. Kim Woo Jin looked at Joseph with a sharp gaze at him. According to Kim Woo Jin, that's not what he should think about. Kim Woo Jin just hopes that they will be fine later. 
Kim Woo Jin also didn't want them to experience unwanted things to happen. The lizard monster that was still chasing the man in the mask. Jae-hoon couldn't calm down if the lizard monster was always chasing him relentlessly. The nightmare that he was having. An equation that hasn't found an end at all. Hopefully, there is a hero who can stop the action of the lizard monster who wants to caught this. The lizard monster has been attacked by the skeleton. Instead of getting weaker, the lizard monster is getting stronger to finish off the Jae-hoon. Jae-hoon was quite tired of running from earlier to avoid the pursuit of this ferocious lizard monster. Kim Woo-jin, who was in the distance looking at the lizard monster, also wondered why he was only chasing one player. There may be certain goals and hidden intentions from this lizard monster. Jae-hoon didn't want to suffer alone. At least he had friends who were equally willing to suffer with each other. It was a little scary to fight against a lizard monster that knew the rules. Jae-hoon looked at Kim Woo-jin. He really wanted Kim Woo-jin to also feel the suffering in this fight and face this evil lizard monster. It was so ugly that the masked officer wanted to invite Kim Woo-jin to fight the lizard monster. The skeleton holder who was still running around from earlier saw the masked man and he blocked the way of Jae-hoon who wanted to launch the action. Jae-hoon already has the skill to be able to attack the lizard monster. If he stays still, he will still chase until he gets it. Now to fight directly and make Kim Woo-jin a target as well. Jae-hoon was surprised that there was still more he had to face alone. It was tiring, and today was a bad day to deal with the various types of crimes that still had not found a solution. Jae-hoon in his heart was already very melted if he could just run away from a place like this. Skeletons are even more ferocious to attack the man in the mask. Jae-hoon, who was scared and confused, saw the flock of skeletons attacking. Things that shouldn't be happening are even more chaotic. This doesn't match his previous expectation that he will survive the pursuit of this evil monster. Jae-hoon sat down. He also didn't realize at all that the lizard monster that silently appeared from behind then slammed him to the ground. It was bad luck to have to feel all this pain. Jae-hoon's leg seemed to be injured quite badly. Skeleton who saw the lizard monster also fell down. Jae-hoon who got up saw that it looked like the lizard monster was dead and helpless. But he can't be happy like before. He had to be alert. It could be that the lizard monster was just another imposter. Then it can wake up suddenly. Lizard monsters are very smart to trick their enemies so that they can carry out their actions. Skeleton approached the lying lizard monster. Skeleton will confirm directly and examine the lizard monster that has been believed to be dead. Jae-hoon hopes to get out of the place alive. He really hopes that a miracle will come to him after feeling a deep misfortune so far. Kim Woo-jin, who approached Jae-hoon earlier, then thanked him for wanting to attract the attention of the lizard monster. The mask man was confused if he had been used as bait to attract the attention of such a monster. It shouldn't be such a big deal to make Jae-hoon an attention whore. Kim Woo-jin wanted to settle things with Jae-hoon right now. It's like something is going to happen again in this place. The mask man was so confused, he didn't know Kim Woo-jin at all. Suddenly, Kim Woo-jin asked to settle something that he didn't even know what to settle. Jae-hoon asked Kim Woo-jin to make a deal before everything just happened. Jae-hoon had to tell what Kim Woo-jin really wanted from him. Not only that Jae-hoon wanted to ask Kim Woo-jin for help in getting him out of this dangerous dungeon. Jae-hoon is already very traumatized if he has to be in this place for a long time. Especially having to watch a lizard monster that is so annoying to him. Kim Woo-jin, who knew that Jae-hoon wanted to ask to save him. Kim Woo-jin thought for a moment. Kim Woo-jin thought that Jae-hoon had made a deal with the creature there, rather than making a deal with Kim Woo-jin. Jae-hoon was very surprised at what Kim Woo-jin had just said about the agreement he had made with himself. Kim Woo-jin also said that the lizard monster was only interested in Jae-hoon, while others he did not want to target at all. Jae-hoon was immediately curious and wanted to immediately know the cause of the lizard monster who only wanted him in this place. The eyes of the lizard monster are for heat detection, and Jae-hoon has that sense of heat. Therefore he was not interested at all to counterattack the cold skeleton. No wonder since the presence of the skeleton that suddenly came to attack made the lizard monster just silent and did not do any attack. Lizard monsters are very annoying to make hot people scared because they will become a continuous target for the next time. 
if one day they meet again with this monster figure. Phoenix Guild Press Conference. In the room, Lee Jin, Kim, and Sashan were chatting about something important to discuss. People had chosen this dungeon for the reason that the boss was on the sixth floor. What a bad time this was. As expected, the public was judging the Phoenix dungeon with very poor ratings. People immediately concluded such conjectures, without finding out first what the truth was like that had happened before it was much better. If it is too early and considers the unqualified talk of a weak person, then time will be wasted thinking about that alone. Meanwhile, there are still many other things to focus on at the moment. It's enough to justify the talk of low life starting from today. The focus now was on how to get to the sixth floor of the dungeon quickly. Thinking about it was much more rewarding. The news on the television had broadcast that from the auction conference declared over, the Messiah Guild had gotten approval to conquer the a dungeon. Those who heard the news assumed that this was possible because the dungeon boss was a death snake. It has been two years since the monster first appeared in France, America, and Japan. Until now, his abilities are still unknown. Not a single person was able to return to life after fighting the monster. The monster is very dangerous and feared by many people who find it. So far, it is meaningless to discuss the degree of difficulty. What was not expected before was that death snakes from abroad would suddenly appear in this country. He also couldn't explain what the monster looked like. People will definitely support Guild Messiah's decision to conquer this dungeon. It was true that Gil Messiah had made an announcement without hiding something that actually happened to the public. It was a jerk to be like this. Only a bunch of scared people will enter, and it will make it difficult. Li Jin also said that the government is still trying to eradicate the dungeon. Li Jin chatted while eating his noodles. Li Jin also said that they would not hesitate to open auctions for overseas players. The conquest of this dungeon will have a very big effect. Therefore, there will also be many things that will happen outside of the predetermined and expected prediction. If there is someone who comes and defeats the Needle Snake, then it is possible to become a hero of this era. There will be a lot of praise coming, and also people who are not known to come just want to offer a cooperation. If it was true that the plot would be like that the tomb of the Messiah Guild leader would think that far. Actually, this was not sure to happen. Just considering their skills alone was enough to give a clear judgment. There must be a reason for the offer. As time goes by, the fear of dungeons continues to increase among players, and there will definitely be many guilds that give up because of this dungeon. It's just a matter of time whether all this will happen or not. If anyone succeeds in conquering the Death Snake dungeon, they will get wealth and fame in this world. How lucky is anyone who gets that wealth? Everyone must be eager to target it. There is no one who refuses to get wealth suddenly. Kim Woo Jin, who is very grateful that the skeleton who has no heat, can easily conquer this lizard monster very well. This time it would be more difficult to perform the charade. Kim Woo Jin had killed the people who had a special relationship with the Guild Messiah. Kim Woo Jin is holding the old sword of Kim Sung. It seemed that Kim Woo Jin had remembered something about the sword in his mind. The sword was still very good. It was also still functioning properly. Kim Woo Jin was going to give Kim Sung's sword to one of the skeletons. Kim Woo Jin was very kind to give away a ton of weapons. Very happy to receive the sword given from Kim Woo Jin. The skeleton looked at the sword. A man who is very grateful because everything has been resolved and died all except himself, who is still alive well. The man asked Kim Woo Jin to explain in detail what had happened if he didn't have a report to send later. It is very important to write a report to tell this news. Kim Woo Jin did not want to explain in detail. He only told him that the lizard monster was stronger than previously thought. That alone was more than enough information to write. Kim Woo Jin hurried to go inside and made a phone call. Kim Woo Jin gave news that everything that happened was in accordance with what he predicted from Park yo actions. All the members of the Skill Guild had targeted Kim Woo Jin. Some of them have unique class swords. The person Kim Woo Jin was referring to was one of the members of the Messiah Guild and the leader of the Yamato Guild. So it was clear now, if any of them were hiding behind this Skill Guild. From all that, Kim Woo Jin did not find anything useful at all to be utilized by him. 
If you continue to investigate later, it will definitely find useful information to investigate deeper. Kim Woojin is waiting for his phone and will call back. Kim Woojin came back out. It seemed like he wanted to do something in that place. Meanwhile, Matsumoto was having an important conversation. He sat on the chair casually. Matsumoto asked his colleague to trust him. But it wasn't like that. His friend had gotten quite unfavorable pressure because he already had a relationship that was monitoring Guild's current work. Anxiety began to arise. Matsumoto, with his initiative, had put it behind the TV and asked his friend to check. Kim Woojin plans to join the game that the Skill Guild will do. Kim Woojin can't just stay with the game that will be done. There is an action that must be done and well thought out and well planned. In this case, Kim Woojin, even curious how Park Yong Wan will face members of the Skill Guild, will he be able to defeat with his strength? Suddenly, Park Yong Wan called Kim Woojin. He was confused about whether to pick up the phone or leave it alone later. Park Yong Wan said that he had read the reports received, and the only one alive was Kim Woojin from the dungeon. Park Yong Wan praised that Kim Woojin was very lucky to survive the lurking death. Park Yong Wan also asked Kim Woojin if he had gotten the information requested earlier. Kim Woojin explained that he was busy saving himself, so he didn't get any information that had been requested. But Kim Woojin guessed that he knew the brains behind all of this, namely the skill guild action this time. Park Wang Yan said it was very good, then asked Kim Woojin to come to his house tomorrow. Kim Woojin must talk about it in detail to Park Wang Yan. Kim Woojin had arrived at the 19th Ilsan locker station. Kim Woojin thought that Si Chan was a very careful broker. Kim Woojin thought that he already knew he was being targeted by someone. Kim Woojin hoped that this time, no one would bore him anymore. Kim Woojin was looking for something in locker number 19. Then Kim Woojin left, using his car. Kim Woojin was always upset because Guild Messiah kept him in trouble. Now Kim Woojin knows that the dungeon he's been eyeing has become a member of Messiah. Now he knows where the dungeon is. After getting a book from the locker, Kim Woojin opened the book. It's not for nothing that Seichen is the target of the Messiah Guild. Kim Woojin was reading and opening the sheet about albino lizard eggs. Kim Woojin didn't expect that Sashan already had this kind of writing. There is information about albino lizard eggs is very secret. Even Kim Woojin himself did not know the information about the egg. It needs to be kept secret, it seems. It was enough for Kim Woojin to overthink it. Now he had to focus on driving first. No one currently knew more than Lee Sejun. Another clue to get information was to enter this dungeon. Kim Woojin made sure he had to enter in various ways that he would do alone. Kim Woojin was very ambitious to find information about it. Seichan called Kim Woojin, who asked if he had a good deal to call Seichan at this time. Kim Woojin arrived the next day. In the room, there were Park Yong Wan and Kim too, so the party of Yung Hun Yaung and the Skull Guild fought each other to the death. Kim Woojin also explained that there were talented people in the Skull Party. Judging from the swords and equipment they use, it seems that they have a special relationship with Japan. That was one of Kim Woojin's temporary conjectures conveyed by him. When he heard the Japanese country park Wang Yan, immediately showed a very flat expression. There are some pretty big groups in Japan, after the conquest of the six-story dungeon is complete. In the action of two consecutive dungeons, Kim Woojin was the only one to survive when all the Skull Guild members died. Park Yong Wan was very proud of Kim Woojin who could save himself alone. After this rescue, Kim Woojin was warned by Park Yong Wan to be careful wherever he goes. They will all definitely keep an eye on Kim Woojin's whereabouts. Park Yong Wan asked Kim Woojin not to do things alone either. He must be accompanied by several people who are able to guard and protect Kim Woojin, while Secretary Kim, who has completed the deposit to Kim Woojin's account. Park Yong Wan hopes that Kim Woojin understands what he said. This was done for the sake of Kim Woojin's personal safety. Furthermore, Park Yong Wan will contact Kim Woojin again after leaving the dungeon. Kim Woojin thanked him for the advice he had given. Kim Woojin hurriedly left Park Yong Wan's room and headed to his car. When Kim Woojin came out of the dungeon yesterday, they knew that the person behind him was Park Yong Wan. From now on, Guild Skull will be targeting Park Yong Wan more than Kim Woojin. That way, Kim Woojin will feel more relieved 
if he is not the real target to be targeted. When Kim Woo Jin met with Park Yong Wan later, he was confused about what kind of expression to show in front of him. Will Kim Woo Jin pretend or not? Kim Woo Jin will think about it later. Suda was in the car, but Kim Woo Jin still continued to panic so that Park Yong Wan could join him. At that time, Lee was on the phone with Se Chun regarding something that Se Chun had received. Lee also didn't know anything about it. Se Chun told her that if there was a problem, then there was no need to worry too much. Kim Woo Jin, who was outside, called Lee Jin to get ready. Kim Woo Jin entered the room where Lee was already, and Lee Jin was sitting in the chair. The girl said that Kim Woo Jin would choose a dungeon that was not really suitable for his level, so she suggested that Kim Woo Jin should work with the appraiser. If he agrees, they will sign a contract as a mutual agreement. Lee Jin, the immortal who has made his name as a player, has never died. When he used to be a Messiah Guild dog and did not expect to be connected with Seichan. This is the first time Kim Woo Jin has heard that there is Eximiner. So the point is, Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin entered the dungeon at the same time. Lee Jin seemed annoyed with Kim Woo Jin's behavior, who didn't seem to hear the words of Lee and Lee Jin just now. Kim Woo Jin apologized to those who were there for his actions. Lee Jin is getting annoyed with Kim Woo Jin who keeps teasing him. Kim Woo Jin thinks Lee Jin is a very temperamental man. Kim Woo Jin asked Lee to talk to Se Chan over the radio. Kim Woo Jin hoped Se Chan would pick up the call from him. Kim Woo Jin asked Se Chan what would happen if the tester died in conquering the dungeon, while no one knew what would happen later. Lee Jin, who was silent and annoyed, saw Kim Woo Jin on the phone with Se Chan. Lee Jin felt that he would be threatened by Kim Woo Jin. Lee Jin took the phone from Kim Woo Jin's hand and spoke to Se Chan. In the phone call, Lee Jin mentioned that Kim Woo Jin was crazy. Lee Jin will enter the dungeon whether he likes it or not, so Lee Jin will immediately take care of it. The two of them berated each other just because of that. Se Chan also warned Lee Jin not to eat in the living room carelessly. It would disturb everyone who was in the living room. Lee Jin explained that he had to eat 10,000 calories every day. Se Chan couldn't manage that. An angry Se Chan suggested that Lee Jin buy cooking oil. One liter alone is nine calories. Se Chan wanted to hang up the phone because talking to Li Jin was a waste of time and battery. Li told the two of them to just talk. If it's like this, they will argue continuously, and no one will give in to each other. Everyone is equally emotional with talks that are not so important. There is no point in talking about food. There are things that are much more important than that. Li Jin warned Kim Woo Jin not to do anything strange. Li Jin will continue to monitor Kim Woo Jin's actions directly. Kim Woo Jin is not a child who has to be monitored every time. Kim Woo Jin knows what he will do is the best for him. Li Jin has a lot of rules made by himself. Li Jin is still raving about Kim Woo Jin, that he will always follow Kim Woo Jin in this dungeon. Li Jin will not let Kim Woo Jin leave him in this place. Kim Woo Jin, who was just silent about the threat given to Li Jin. Judging from the past, it wasn't a bluff. So far, Kim Woo Jin didn't expect to meet the immortal Li Jin here. Could it be luck or bad luck for Kim Woo Jin? On the other hand, Kim Woo Jin also has many things that he can use well. Li got a call. Li said that Kim Woo Jin and Li Jin had gone out a few minutes ago. If Li Jin doesn't come back from the dungeon, it means Kim Woo Jin is the enemy, said Se Chan in a phone call with Li, arriving somewhere. Li Jin is still raving about Kim Woo Jin. Li Jin knew that Kim Woo Jin was very upset with him for following wherever Kim Woo Jin went. Li Jin asked Kim Woo Jin to show him how to finish them all off. Li Jin couldn't get Kim Woo Jin to move calmly. He was always impatient with what he was going to do. In addition, Li Jin is such an emotional person that he can't discuss well at all. Kim Woo Jin doesn't know how to deal with Li Jin's sullen behavior. Li Jin also had the ego of not giving Kim Woo Jin any help if something happened to Kim. Li Jin asked Kim Woo Jin to do it now. Kim Woo Jin in his heart was very upset to see Li Jin's treatment, who asked him to do what he ordered. So Kim Woo Jin didn't say much, seeing Kim Woo Jin who was silent. Li Jin guessed that what he asked was too difficult for Kim Woo Jin to do. Li Jin took out the chocolate and ate it. There is one condition that must be done by Kim Woo Jin if Li Jin wants to help him, 
namely Kim Woo Jin must kowtow at the feet of Lee Jin. When Kim Woo Jin kowtowed, then Lee Jin promised to help Kim Woo Jin. It is likely that he just received the Blessed of Sticks, a legendary skill that can only be obtained by people who have a hard life fighter, which must experience having his head cut off and his heart removed to become an immortal. Kim Woo Jin thinks Lee Jin might be lucky to have gotten an immortal body. But after meeting Kim Woo Jin, Lee Jin will realize that the ability he has is just an illusion. Kim Woo Jin had taken out his skeleton using the sword he had given him in the past. Lee Jin, who saw the skeleton, seemed cute and adorable to him. Lee Jin had been curious about the skeleton for a long time. The way Kim Woo Jin completed the dungeon alone was because he was helped by the skeleton he had. At the time of the forest, the skeleton had killed many beasts. It's hard to believe even though you see it with your own eyes. All this time thinking that the skeleton soldier is only an enemy obstacle. His sword ability is like a high-level player. The higher the level, the higher the number of skeletons that can be summoned. Then it is very dangerous if it is on the enemy's side. This is as Hyung suspected not an ordinary player. He will talk to Hyung about this when he gets out of this place. Kim Woo Jin asked Lee Jin's opinion about his skeleton. According to Lee Jin, Kim Woo Jin's skeleton is pretty good so he doesn't have to accompany Kim Woo Jin wherever he goes. If it's out of here, then Lee Jin will report it to Se Chan. Kim Woo Jin agreed to that. Lee Jin was surprised that Kim Woo Jin suddenly agreed to what he had just said. These cute skeletons will be unpleasant, said Lee Jin. Kim Woo Jin wouldn't ask for help from Lee Jin and just let him watch. Lee Jin asked Kim Woo Jin not to take his words to heart. Lee Jin apologized for his words that had made Kim Woo Jin feel hurt. Suddenly there was a little attack from both of them. The strategy carried out by Kim Woo Jin was just to get the summoner. Kim Woo Jin has hidden his abilities in front of Lee Jin. He also didn't know what Kim Woo Jin wanted from him. Lee Jin made sure that Kim Woo Jin wouldn't get any of it. Kim Woo Jin tied Lee Jin to a tree and hung there. Lee Jin was very angry at being treated like this. Lee Jin was very hungry. He didn't want to starve to death up a tree like this. Kim Woo Jin did a linen neck to Lee Jin for no reason. Then Kim Woo Jin cut the rope. Lee Jin fell to the ground very hard. Kim Woo Jin will give Lee Jin a chance this time. Kim hoped that Lee Jin would not waste the opportunity that had been presented. Lee Jin must run this opportunity well, so that Kim Woo Jin doesn't do the same thing as before. Kim Woo Jin emphasized that he had shown his ability in front of Lee Jin. Now it was Lee Jin's turn to show his skills in front of Kim Woo Jin directly. Lee Jin was confused as to why he had to show his skills in front of Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin asked Lee Jin to bait the monsters here so that Kim's skeleton soldier could attack easily. Kim Woo Jin will untie the knot in his hand. Lee Jin will not follow the request of Kim Woo Jin. It turned out that Lee Jin preferred to be hung again like before. Lee Jin really regretted meeting a crazy person like this Kim Woo Jin. After thinking for a long time, Lee Jin will do it. Considering his role as a tanker, then he will do it. Tanker is a role that is tasked with distracting the enemy or holding back enemy attacks. This role player has a fairly high stamina to do. Lee Jin began to be attacked by quite a lot of wild animals nearby. The beast is eager to prey on Lee Jin. Li Jin's face began to bleed due to a scratch. All the beasts thromboli Li Jin. The skeleton came quickly to replace the whale animals one by one. The beasts finally died. Kim Woo Jin watched from the top of the tree to see the whole scene. Li Jin was already very weak. He woke up from his helplessness to fight that many beasts. Kim Woo Jin judged that Li Jin was not as strong as when he first met him, however. Li Jin was still the same and would not die so easily. Lee Jin would be useful to Kim Woo Jin in the future. The dull face and blood streaks made Lee Jin very crazy because of Kim Woo Jin's sadistic actions. Kim Woo Jin continued to allow Lee Jin to attack the beast without giving him a single break. It was so helpless to fight back. The animal was very ferocious. Its fangs were also very sharp. Skeleton came to attack the beast again. Lee Jin was still lucky because there was still a skeleton that helped solve all this well. Lee Jin wanted to make sure that the beasts were still there or not. One of the beasts bit Lee Jin's legs. Suddenly Lee Jin talked to Skeleton that this was only used by Kim Woo Jin. Klain really worked hard to exterminate all these beasts. 
Li Jin wanted to trick the skeletons into not following the orders made by Kim Woo Jin. Li Jin, who felt he had been ignored by the skeleton, even though only bones have dared to underestimate the human Li Jin. Li Jin wanted to give the skeletons a high five and not sell out. Li Jin invited them all to gather and then explained that they were all friends with each other. What plan will Li Jin do so that he can trick the skeleton to come with him? Kim Woo Jin observed that Li Jin was different from before. Li Jin, with an immortal body who fought against the Messiah Guild. Li Jin was still forcing skeletons to high-five him. Lin Jin used to be someone who was recognized for his strength by Kim Woo Jin. Li Jin's fighting method is like a monster utilizing his immortality, where every time he loses his flesh, he takes his opponent's bones. Kim Woo Jin just can't carelessly approach Li Jin. Surprisingly, his monster soul at that time did not appear at this time. Li Jin, who was just silent, did not show anything when the many beasts began to attack him. It was only Skeleton who helped him to get back up again. There is a condition that makes Li Jin's soul survive like this. Kim Woo Jin also has no memory of Seichun in the past. However, if you look at it now, they have a close relationship with each other. Seichun's death has awakened Li Jin. This means that the longer Kim Woo Jin keeps Seichun alive, there is a big possibility that the future will be more distant. That future is the future that the Messiah Guild wants to create. Don't know what he wants to do. What was clear was that right now it was trying to attract enough monsters to keep it alive. It wasn't just by chance. He even knew the recovery speed, plus being able to analyze dungeon monsters. This is an ability that can only be obtained after having a long enough experience. The ability gained not only has the highest level. Kim Woo Jin praised Lee Jin's excellent work, then invited him to move to the second floor. Lee Jin followed Kim Woo Jin's orders. Being on the second floor was even more challenging than the current floor. Li Jin had to prepare himself well to face the monsters that would come. Li Jin thought that he would die in vain due to the attacking beasts. Fortunately, Li Jin is still alive even though he has to feel pain in several parts of his body. Li Jin asked if he should rest. His body was getting weak and he hadn't eaten yet. Kim Wu Jin showed him an object. Kim asked Li Jin to be confident in his running power. Li Jin is still confused about which run he is referring to at the moment. Kim Woo Jin suddenly did something in front of Li Jin. Kim Woo Jin suggested that Li Jin could run fast. After running fast, Li Jin saw a very large monster looking at him, his eyes burning red in color. Gosh, it feels like Li Jin is not given the opportunity to be able to breathe for a minute in the face of monsters. Still not satisfied, either Kim Woo Jin gave a challenge like this in front of Li Jin. Seishan read a newspaper article about the government opening up opportunities for foreign guilds to participate. It was predicted that the Messiah Guild would give up. Seishan asked Li how far he had gotten in recording the guilds that were going to apply. Li had finished since this morning. The rest was just analyzing it. There was still time to finish it quickly before Li Jin returned here suddenly. Li was confused by the Master Jin that Seishan was talking about while Li Jin was still trying hard to fight the big monster. Li Jin realized that the monster was just chasing him. Li Jin ran very fast to avoid the monster's attack. He did not want to be a victim and die in vain in this place. Li Jin still didn't understand what was happening at this time. Skeletons have begun to appear to defeat the evil monsters chasing Li Jin. Both times, Li Jin has become bait. It was true what Kim Woo Jin said that this second floor monster was more challenging than the previous one. The size of the monster is more ferocious and larger like a giant who is preying on his prey. Li Jin will take revenge on Kim Woo Jin later for all of his actions. Li Jin was already struggling to cope with all this. Li Jin held the monster's head with all his might. It was very big. Li Jin said that it's not good to bother each other here. Then Li Jin will finish this all together. Skeleton pierced the monster's bag using the sword given by Kim Woo Jin. The albino lizard was already affected by the blood poison. The effect of the poison had reached its maximum level. These soldier skeletons had been trained like special forces, unlike the skeletons summoned by others. They are only used for additional attackers or to buy time. Alibo lizard that continues to decline due to the effects of poison. The monster rose again. Li Jin, who was curious whether the monster could see the many skeletons near him or not, 
while this monster continued to pursue Li Jin relentlessly. Li Jin asked Kim Wu Jin what magic he had used so that everything could be like this. From the beginning, Kim Wu Jin had told Li Jin to run as fast as he could. Li Jin still wouldn't listen to him properly. Now just feel the pain of being chased by monsters. His healing speed is indeed crazy. I didn't expect it to be like this. Li Jin was still attacking monsters. The calories in his body were just wasted in vain. Li Jin slightly regretted having made the move. Li Jin was not discouraged he would attack the monster who wanted to pounce on him. Various ways are done by Li Jin. Skeleton began to attack again. It's true Kim Wu Jin has treated Li Jin like bait. Skeleton, who worked together, stuck a sword into the monster's lower area so that the monster was helpless again with that. Skeleton was also not satisfied again, thrusting his sword into the monster's head until it bled a lot. 